father. Wow, can you tell? So you know about my father. So can you tell me more about that? That's fascinating. Kaže, 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 znači, ako znate za, za mogu oce, biste vidjeti nešto o tome. Nije znao. Izvini, pričate dvoje i onda ja ne razumem. A, ja se, ja se to ide obrzam, pardon. A, kaže, kaže, nije, nije znao da, da znate za njegovog oca i, i ovaj... Mnogo mi odlučio o tome kako se zazve za njega i to. To je bila dosta izvesna istorija. Ja mislim da svi znaju a, koji su pratili situaciju u Americi po, po ljudskim pravima. Uh, it was a very famous story of father and everybody who was uh, tracking the, the human rights stories in America is pretty much very well aware of your father. Oh, okay. Did, did he, I mean, does he know about the story of like how my dad was was Muslim and was like a Peter, da li, uh, Peter, da li, da li ste, da li ste, da li znate celu priču kako je njegov otac bio uh, musliman, pa je onda postao, preobratio se u hrišćanstvo i to? To je bio mali Mahatma Gandhi. He says uh, he, it was a small Mahatma Gandhi, your father. Oh, interesting. Yeah, my father, my my father is very pro Russia. Njegov njegov otac je prilično pro ruski ovako nastrojen. Radi. Da da da, rabote. Efirite. Sve mi 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 smo se podključili. They are they are completely ready. They they're tuned in. All right, I'm I'm live streaming right now, so we're good. All right. On je isto započeo, tako da je s njegove strane sve krenulo. Sve možemo da počne. We're on. We're set. We're we can be. Znači, možemo po- da krenemo sam dobro čuo. Od nas malo koči ovdje, ali ajde krenemo, pa ćemo onda... Uzeti. So they having technical issues, so it's lagging a little bit, but, but they can commence. All right, yeah, it's fine. Um... There's people on the live stream already. Um, so let me ask you the first question. For one, I love the movie that they did about you, uh, Sniper Story. And I've been trying to get an interview with you pretty much ever since I uh, I saw the movie. I thought it was really well done. It's important to wish things, wish for things, but because wishes come true. <laughs> I really liked uh, how they, how they, I really liked how you acted in that movie. Not acted, but I, I really liked how you conducted yourself in in and and the way that you were like like even in the middle of the battlefield in Donbass you still remained like super calm and that's the thing that really uh, got me interested in talking to you njega je oduševilo kako ste vi glumili u tom dokumentarcu onda se ispravio nije niste baš glumili nego kako ste kako se držali vaše držanje njega je potpuno je potpuno oduševilo i od tada ima veliku želju da da porazgovara s vama i to mu je to mu je izuzetno interesantno. Znate kako smo kako je snima taj film. Uh, Olja je prvo bila na ukrajinskoj teritoriji, pa je zatim došla na našu teritoriju u principu sa željom da nađe uh, rusku vojsku koja tamo nije bila. So the the film happened because Olja was in the Ukrainian territory, but eventually she wanted to go to the, the to their territory uh-huh. as in the Donbas territory and to see what how things are uh, look from over there. Uh-huh. But how do you um how do you remain so calm? Because in the in the film you were just calm all the time, like even after you got shot. You just stay calm consistently, and that's what interested me so much. How do you like like what is the secret how do you remain so calm in such an intense environment kako kako ostajete mirni tokom samog filma uh, bili ste potpuno mirni i kaže uh, čak čak i mirni kada pucaju po vama i sve to postoji li ikakva tajna u svemu tome uh, ja se nikad ne nervira i never get angry how how do you not get angry how how is that possible kako se nervirate kako je to uopšte moguće Pa 
I have no clue. No clue. Okay. <laughs> we'll never know the secret. <laughs> Još dok sam bio mali, shvatio sam da s nerviranjem ništa se ne mijenja. Sve se treba probati rešiti razgovorom. Ako se ne, ne uspeva rešiti razgovorom, onda ili bolje skloniti se od problema, ili ako već ne možeš da se skloniš, onda tuci koliko god možeš i sve snage. I što bi rekao Putin, udaraj prvi. Ever since he was a kid, he knew that that uh, there was just no use to getting angry and nervous about things. And he realized early on that... that uh, Everything should be resolved by talking, and if you can't resolve by talking, then just get away from the problem as far as, uh, far as possible. If not, then then just give it your best, give it your best shot. You see, go ahead. Alexander Kharchenko, na primer, on dugo nije mogao, je tri godine od prilike nije mogao da me shvati nikako. I te kad je snimljen film na rad snajpera i kad je pročitao knjigu koju sam ja napisao, sreli smo tu kafiću gde je posle toga i poginuo i kaže ja mislim da te sad tek malo shvata. I kaže pa kako se ne nerviraš pa, pa ne ja pojem. Aleksandar Zakarčenko wanted to understand me but uh, he just wasn't able to and he was trying to get him for three years he couldn't then they finally met uh, in, a, in a coffee shop and right before Aleksandar Zakarčenko died and uh, he, he when they met actually eventually met the, he, real, he finally told him now I'm thinking I'm, I'm, think I'm, I'm finally trying to get you uh, starting to get you the way uh, why you're not getting angry. I, I just find so 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 even so you, so this began uh, at a young age that you learned how to remain calm. Znači to je počelo u vašim mladim godinama, ovaj to to kako ste naučili da jednostavno budete mirni. Pa da, još dok sam bio u osnovnoj školi, imao sam neki problem sa učiteljima i video sam da se ne isplati s njima svađati se. I počeo jedno sam razmišljam. Rano sam se doko po neke knjiga čitati koje nisam razumeo po pitanju filozofije, po gluposti neke. Uglavnom ja mislim da je to sve uticalo na, na to. No i vjerovatno je po rođenju tako, Bog te pita. Da... Uh, so he started in the elementary school. He, was, he had a thing with, uh, with a teacher and which, which is when he realized that it's just, there's no, just no use to confronting people and he he did read some books some philo- on philosophy and various various mm-hmm. books and uh he didn't get any of it and and he also uh, but it could be just inherited god knows i see so let me um let me ask you questions that i had ready for you uh f- and then we can we can segue off into other things um so basically, you've been fighting in uh, Donbass since the beginning of the conflict. Evo da počnemo onda sa pitanjima koje, pa, pa ćemo onda lako da, da ove, odemo, da, da odemo da ga nam odgovara. Znači, vi ste u borbi u, u Donbasu od samog početka. Još i Sevastopol. Right from Sevastopol. Why did you join the conflict in Ukraine, in Donbass? Zašto ste se priključili borbi u Donbasu u Ukrajini? Uh, kad je bio kod nas rat, znači kad je bila kod nas uh, prvo, prvo kad je bio građanski rat uh, 90. godina, zatim i 99. godine, uh, kod nas su dolazili Rusi. Znači ne pričamo o armiji, pričamo o dobrovoljcima. When there was a war among us in the 1990s and in 1999, there were some volunteer, Russian volunteers coming to, coming to us. Mm-hmm. I kad je počelo sve to Majdan, kad je počeo, kad je već bilo izvesno da će u Sevastopolj da krenu nacistički bataljoni, ljudi s kojima sam ja bio ranije, upoznat s kojima sam bio zajedno kod nas u ratu, njih dvojica su me pozvali da dođem u Sevastopolj. So when everything began, when Maidan began, uh, it became very certain that uh, they're going to go for Sevastopol. Uh, the, the Nazi battalions will go for Sevastopol. So the men who who I'm known myself have called me. I zatim kad je sve krenulo na Ukrajini, pošto je od Maidana bilo izvesno da će početi na Donbasu, rekli su da jedno tri meseca na Donbas, za tri meseca će sve to završiti. Ukrajina nije takva da, da će da puca po svojim građanima, 
Međutim, greška je bila jer Ukrajinci su odmah podigli avione, počeli su prvo avionima da tuku po svojim građanima, tako da tih tri meseca još uvek traje. So, uh, when everything started happening in Ukraine, uh, it, it was, they said that, that there's going to be just three months uh, for Donbass and it's going to be over quick. Uh, and they said that Ukraine is not like that, that they're not going to uh, kill their own citizens. But that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. they, they just raised their, they mustered their planes and they did, they, they were hitting their own, their own people. So you joined because uh, you heard about civilians being targeted by the bombings. Znači, vi ste priključili ratu jer ste čuli da, da uh, su civili gađeni. Uh, ne, mi smo, mi smo već tamo došli, znači ja i, i drugi dobrovoljci, mi smo već došli na Donbass uh, kad je rat počeo. Znači, to je isto građanski rat. Znači, na jednoj strani su uh, bili pro-ruski ljudi, na drugoj strani su bili pro-zapadni. Znači, pričamo o ljudima sa Majdana. Moramo da znamo prvo šta je Majdan da bi mogli dalje da pričamo da bi bio državni. So, uh, no, I was already there. Me and other volunteers in Donbass were, were, there, uh, were there in Donbass when the war started. It's, a, it's also a civil war. Mm -hmm. On one hand, you had the pro-Russian people, and the, on the other hand, you had the pro-Western people. We're talking about people from Majdan, so that we, we know where, where, where we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, a question that I like to ask people when I when I interview them uh, for these types of things is, what was the most disturbing thing that they saw? And the reason why I ask this is because I want to get the message very quickly to the minds of Americans so they can understand how serious the situation is. So if you don't mind me asking, uh, when you were fighting in Donbass before the special operation, what was the most disturbing thing that you ever saw? Pitanje ko im da postavljam inače u intervjuima je jer bitno mi je da jer hoću da prenesem poruku brzo umovima Amerikanaca da bi shvatili koliko je ozbiljna situacija. Ako vam ne smeta, šta je najgroznija stvar koju ste i videli? Znate kako ja sve navijeko na svašta. Najužasnije je uvek kada vidiš da ginu teca. I'm already used to everything, seeing a lot of things, all the things, but the most terrible thing is always seeing the kids die. There's nothing more horrible than that. I saw a lot of suffering from their soldiers, but if you take a gun in your hands, you can expect that da će se sa tobom desiti svašta. Znači, možeš ostati invalid, možeš poginuti, mogu da te zarobe, mogu da se življavaju na tobom, ali to je vojnik i vojnik svaki koji je otišao u rat, on je spreman za to. Međutim, deca, ona su tu ni kriva, ni dužna, a Ukrajinci su ih ubijali stotina. I've seen a lot of torture. A lot of them torture our soldiers. As soon as you pick up arms, you can expect every... Just about anything can happen to you. Uh, they can kill you, they can maim you, they can wound you. But that's that's being a soldier. Uh, but uh, but the kids, kids are, are innocent. And the Ukrainians have killed hundreds of kids. Now, people in the, in the Western uh, media, they laugh at the fact that there is... They laugh at... When, when Putin talked about denazification and that Ukraine has a Nazi problem or a far-right problem, uh, people in the Western media mocked this. So, uh, you use up yeah, go ahead. You use up on the media, Mr. Smeri Tomek, when Putin talks about denification, that Ukraine has a Nazi problem with the Nazi Can you tell us about the, the Nazi problem in Ukraine and how bad is it? Možete li vam reći o, o problemu sa nacizmom u Ukrajini i koliko je to sve loše postalo? Pa, u Ukrajini nema problema sa nacizmom. Ukrajini nema problema sa nacizmom. Kod njih je to državna ideologija, tako da ako je nešto državna ideologija, sa tim ne može da bude problema. Nacizm je za state ideology over there, so if that's a state ideology, there can't be a problem with it. Ako obratite pažnju, možete da vidite da i bivši predsjednik Porošenko i sadašnji predsjednik Zelenski 
da njihovo obezbedjenje nosi ambleme nacističke Nemačke. If you take notice of the ex-president Poroshenko and the current president Zelensky, you will notice uh, that their security has literal Nazi emblems. Zatim na teritoriju Ukrajine futbalski stadioni, ulice, trgovi, svi oni dobijaju imena ljudi koji su osuđeni u Ninbeškom procesu za saradnju sa nacističkom Njemačkom. Znači tamo problema nema sa nacizmom, to je državna ideologija, tamo sve to funkcioniše uspešno. Then, then the, on the territory of Ukraine, there are football stadiums getting, uh, getting, uh, being named after people convicted in the Nuremberg processes. So there's no actual problem with Nazism because. Well, by by problem, I mean a presence, right? There's a strong Nazi presence. That's what I mean mean by problem. Because problem is in the presence. Zauzimali određene batalione i tamo su kod njih nacističke zastave, imaju čak imaju oltare gde su žrtvovali ljude, tamo stvarno je nenormalno sa tim. I mogli ste da vidite, svako ko je hteo da vidi, mogao je da vidi kad su zarobljeni u Azovu, koliko su imali tetovažno sa Hitlerom, sa svastikom, sa svim tim nacističnim simbolima. So it's a state, it's a state ideology. For instance, we have uh, taken over certain battalions, and uh, they have Nazi flags. Uh, they have altars on which they sacrifice people, and everybody that was there, uh, seeing them them uh, being being overcome, have seen how how many emblems and Nazi insignias and not Nazi tattoos the Azov battalion had. Okay, uh, go ahead. Kažu, došli su na Ukrajinu plaćenici iz Evrope i sveta. Dobar deo njih nisu plaćenici, oni su došli i ratuju zato što veruju nacizam. Znači, to i oni zvanično o tome govore. Znači, nacisti iz Poljske, iz Nemačke, iz Švedske, iz Amerike, iz Rusije ima nacista koji su odišli na tu stranu. Tako da, čisto se vidi ko je tu nacista u toj politiji. The whole world actually knows about this. They uh, it, it is said they say that they've come to Ukraine uh, as as mercenaries, as foreign mercenaries, but they're not mercenaries. They've come there because they believe in Nazism. Uh, there, there are there are uh, there are public publicly known Nazis who have come from uh, Poland, Germany, Sweden, America, and Russia, and th this is how you know who the Nazi is. Okay. Um, I heard human sacrifices, so I'm wondering if you could elaborate more on that. GoPro kamere i to je objavljeno, ima na internetu, može da se vidi. With my own eyes, but when we have taken certain territories, when the special military operation began, we have found altars with blood. We have taken shots of this with our GoPro cameras and it has all been published, those recordings. Okay, this is new to me. I find this to be very disturbing. Da, ovaj... Na Ukrajini postoje bataljoni Donbass 1 i Donbass 2. Mi smo ih rasturili u potpunosti i kad smo mislili da ćemo tamo naći neke velike trofeje, našli smo gomilu gumenih tamo pomagala i plastičnih za pedere. We have found... Donbass 2 pravi pederski bataljoni. Uh, when we have we have overtaken Ukrainian positions uh, like Donbas one and Donbas two, we have beaten them. And when we we beaten them, we found these altars, and we have find all, found all all kind of things, including rubber rubber tools for certain things, and we started calling them the faggot battalions. Oh, I know what he's talking about. Yeah, I've heard about this before. That truth is a Iranian. Um, I saw the video from 2015 of uh, members of the Azov Battalion crucifying a man, 
And what disturbed me was how Western media was saying that it was fake. A video sam 2015. godine onaj video s tima ku kome su, su pripadnici Azov bataljon razapinjali nekog čovjeka i veo me uznemirilo to kako su zapadni mediji odmah rekli da je to sve lažni snimak. A što ja, ja treba da odgovorim nešto na to? Ja te ne čujem. A, video, video sam 2015. godine snimak na kom su članovi Azov bataljona bili bili razapeli čoveka i zapadi i vrlo me uznemirilo to kako su kako su zapadni mediji odmah rekli da je to lažan snimak. Znaš kako zapadni mediji ne mogu da kažu da je to istina zato kako će onda da opravdaju sav novac i to kako pomažu Ukrajini. Evo na početku ove specijalne vojne operacije sami Ukrajinci snimaju, ne znam da li ste videli to na primjer jednog ruskog vojnika su zarobili, vezali su ga za stepenice, boli su ga izboli su ga nožem nekoliko puta i zatim su mu taj nož zabili u oko i sami to objavljuju. Tako da njihovo izdevati su nad ljudima je sasvim očevidno za one koji hoće da vide, ali zapad to ne smije da prizna, kao što ne smije da prizna da je tamo nacizam koji je očevidno. Media cannot say it out loud uh, and cannot say that it's the truth. How, how else are they going to just explain all the money and help for Ukraine and the support? Uh, but they are recording this, the, all of this themselves. They've captured. The, there's a video of a ru- captured Russian soldier, and and uh, the Ukrainians themselves have published this. There, uh, it's a video in which they keep stabbing him with with a knife, and then they stab stab him in the eye. And so this is actually very obvious what they're doing. But the West just cannot admit it that that it's there. That's obvious, and it's obvious for anybody to see. And it's obvious that there's Nazis over there. Uh, I also saw a video of, uh, of um, Ukrainian soldiers burying uh, a man alive, and the Western. Uh, I looked into this in the Western media, and they were also saying that it was fake. So it seems like everything is fake, and and uh, Ukrainians can do no wrong. Video kom ukrajinski vojnici iz nekog čovjeka zakopavaju živog. I, I zapadni mediji su odmah rekli da to se lažu, izgleda je sve lažno što što ukrajinci urade. Everybody believes in what they wish to be true. Ili u šta mora da veruje. Or what they would pref- uh, what they have to be to believe that it's, that it's true. Now, now let me ask you um in the Western uh, media, they like to always say, well, yes, Ukraine does have some Nazis, but uh, Russia has Nazis also. And, and what, what is your, your response to that? Uh, in the media, they say that yes, Ukraine has problems with the Nazis, but Russia also has problems with the Nazis. What would be your answer to that? In Russia, there are also those who like the I oni su trenutno nalaze u tim nacističkim bataljonima na strani Ukrajine. Oni su otišli još 2014. godine na teritoriju Ukrajine i ratuju protiv nas. Russia too has people that love Nazism and they are they are fighting on the Ukrainian side of things. They've gone over there uh, all the way in 2014. Okay. I to ovdje nikri ovdje ako nađu naciste njih hapse, a na Ukrajini naciste veličaju od njih prave heroje. To je velika razlika. Uh, nobody is hiding this. Uh, when, uh, when the Russians find Nazis, they are arrested, but in Ukraine they just glorify them, and that's the main difference. I also heard that there are Chechen Mujahideen who are fighting uh, for Ukraine as well. Mujahedini koji se, koji se bore na stani Ukrajine također. A njih je bilo jako malo. To je bila jedna mala grupa u naselju Širokino 2014. i 2015. godine. Jako, jako mala grupa i ona je brzo uništena. Tako da posle toga ih i nije bilo nešto. Bili su Čečeni, znači ti koji su... Uh, od, od Dudajeva koji su bili. Međutim... Uh, Posle borbenih dejstava počeli su da trguju drogom, a trgovina drogo je dozvoljena samo pripadnicima SBU, tako da su ih Ukrajinci poubijali jako brzo. Uh, 
there were really a few of them. Uh, there was a, a small group led by Shirokin in 2014 and 2015, a very, very small group, but it was quickly destroyed. They, they, afterward, there, uh, there wasn't many of them, any of them. Uh, the, there were Chechens from the Diab who were over there, but after the, the fighting, they started uh, do, uh, selling drugs, trafficking, uh, doing uh, drug trafficking, but only the security forces of Ukraine are allowed to do this, do this mm -hmm. so they, they got all destroyed. Uh, another argument that I hear is that uh, Wagner is fighting uh, in Ukraine and Wagner is, has Nazis. So therefore, you can't uh, make this argument that Ukraine has a, a Nazi problem. Does he have a response to that one? The argument that I hear is that Wagner in Ukraine is fighting in the Donbass and that he also has Nazis, so that he can't say that Ukraine has a problem with Nazis. Do you have any answer to that? Do you know that Wagner is the most effective unit that is located on the front? Trenutno. I naravno da će Zapad koji ne zna kako drugačije s njima da se bori, da kažu da su oni nacisti. Oni su sve nas nazivaju nacistima. Tako da, to je najdisciplinovanije podrazdeljenje i najefektivnije na frontu. Naravno da ga Zapad prsi. Wagner Group is the most effective unit on the war front. Presently, and of course that the West will, the West doesn't simply know how to counter this, so they keep calling them Nazis. Uh, it is the most disciplined unit in the war. So, of course, they're, they're going to say that. The most important thing is to, to uh, make up one's mind on what the Nazis, Nazis are. Uh, is it the Nazism in its original form, or is it just something that you can just make up and, and pin it on whoever you dislike and, and don't like? Okay. Uh, now, let me ask you another question from the list here. Um, what now? If I remember correctly, you you went to the war in twenty in the in Donbass when it began. And then eventually you went, you left, but you returned back to the conflict uh, when Russia did the special operation in February of 2022. Why did you return back to Ukraine in 2022 to, to fight? I you were in the beginning of the in the beginning of the war, why Ja sam otišao u augustu 2018. godine, imao sam teško ranjenje, godinu i po dana sam se lečio. Uh, I have departed in August of 2018. I was heavily wounded, so, so I fled for a year and a half to, to bend from the wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, zatim 2020-2021. godina, kad su bili problemi sa snajperim profesionalcima koji su dolazili na ukrajinsku stranu, ja sam odlazio na dve nedelje, tri nedelje, tamo mesec dana, koliko je trebalo da je nađem i uništim i zatim sam vraćao kući. Nisam bio, da kažemo tako, deo vojske, nego kao, kako su tamo govorili, ljudi naše vojce. Also, I was... In 2020 and 2021, when there were problems with sni professional snipers on the Ukrainian side, uh, I, I've, I've come back to the war front. I would come back for two or three weeks or even a month and, and then I would just destroy them and then I would go back. I wasn't a part of the, the army as much as I was a, a solo. I see. A za krajem 2021. godine, kad je Ukrajina počela da gomila velike snage na granici sa Donbasom, većina nas koji smo bili tamo dobrovoljci ili koji su bili u armiji ljudi pa su otišli, krenuli smo da se vraćamo nazad i da provodimo obuku sa momcima jer smo očekivali napad Ukrajine, ona je gomilala ogromne snage, tako da smo mi negde u novembru 2021. se počeli skupljati i očekivati napad sa Ukrajine. Jednostavno opet nismo očekivali da će Lucija duđi u rat, nego da ćemo svojim silama morati da izustavimo. So at the end, by the end of the 2021, 
when uh, there was a huge amount of forces being gathering, being mustered uh, for Ukraine on the Ukrainian side, the most of us that were there as volunteers have have uh, been recalled. Uh, there was an expectation, and they, we've, we, we've assembled to train the new troops. Uh, there was an expectation that Russia will not engage once again, and we, we're expecting that we'll have to carry the, the bundle of fighting ourselves. Um, in this particular conflict in 2022, what has the fighting um, been like for you? Uh, in this concrete war in 2022, how was the war for you? Okay, the war like any war. Like any war. Um, in this in this particular conflict in 2022, uh, in your experience, what has been the most horrible thing that you have seen? The most disturbing thing that you have seen? U ovom sukobu 2022. godine u vašoj večoj sluštvu šta je bila najgora, najgroznija stvar koju ste imali prije koju vidite? Najgroznija stvar je bila naši su momke iz Sobra. Sobra, ja ne znam kako to da prevedeš tamo, to je kao neka nacionalna gvardija kod njih, koji su bili vezani za ograde. Tamo je bila tako manja grupa ljudi i njima su izvađene oči na živu. Na živu su im vadile oči, to znamo zato što je krv im se lila niz lice. Jer kad je čovjek mrtav, krv ne teče. Ne mogu da kažem da me je to šokiralo, od svega sam se nagledao u svom životu, ali to je bilo u tom nečem najstrašnijim, da kažemo, što sam vidio u tom periodu. Were some some young men from Sobra, which is a national guard, they were tied to a fence. Uh, there was a small it was a small uh, group of young men, and they had their eyes plucked out, and uh, and it was done uh, li live, so to say. So uh, we know this because uh, because there, there was uh, they were bleeding from the, their eye holes, and uh, when when a man is dead, uh, there's no bleeding, so. That, I can't say that I've seen. That I can't say that this shocked me, but it was the most horrible, horrendous thing that I've seen this year. Now, in the Western media, when they talk about the war, they love to talk about how Ukraine is retaking territory in Kherson and Kharkiv. They've how they've retaken, how they have retaken uh, Kherson. And they act or they talk as if Russia is just losing the war. But from your experience, give us the reality of the war. Who's really winning this war? Who's really winning this conflict? Zapravo ne vidim kad pričaju o ratu, volio da kažu kako je Ukrajina preuzela teritoriju Hersonu i Harkovu i kako su preoteli sve i pričaju kao da Rusija jednostavno gubi rat. Iz vašeg iskustva, dajte nam stvarnost. Ko stvarno pobeđuje? Stvarno pobeđuje onaj ko gubi manje vojnika i ko gubi manje tehnike. Znači to je u svakom ratu tako. Teritorija se dobija, oduzima, znači osvajate, gubite, osvajate, gubite. Pitanje je kad gubite teritoriju koliko gubite vojnika i tehnike. Znači prevedi to pa će vam da još. Uh, the one who's winning is is the one who's losing fewer men, uh, fewer men and and, uh, and vehicles and equipment. Ter you gain territory, you lose it. You you gain it and lose it again to and fro. But uh, the issue is whether you are losing uh, when, when you're losing territory. How uh, how many how many troops and and military equipment are you actually losing? Yes, my name Znači, mi gubimo sad bar 30 puta manje vojnika nego što ih gubi Ukrajina. Pitanje to je iscrpljujući rat. Naprimjer, u aprilu mesec Ukrajina je već počela da pregovara u vezi kapitulacije, zato što im je nedostajalo tehnike. Mi smo učiniti 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 Uh, they've already uh, been uh, having peace talks in April this year. Mm -hmm. 
su Amerikanci počeli dovoziti jako mnogo tehnike, nisu im dali da završe pregovore. Zatim su zašli u tupik neku u augustu mesecu, kad su počeli, kad više nisu imali dovoljno ljudi za neke ozbiljne akcije, posle toga su već počeli masovno da dolaze strance na teritoriju koje je Ukrajina, znači ne dobrovoljci, nego plaćenica. Then the Americans started bringing in a lot of a lot of uh, equipment. Uh, they they prevented the the peace talks from happening. And when they didn't have enough manpower for to continue military operations, then uh, there was a massive influx of mercenaries. Vojnu rat dobija onaj ko zna, znači sem toga što se tiče gubitaka i ko zna zašto vodi taj rat. Znači, stranci koji su došli na teritoriju Ukrajine, oni su došli tamo zbog novca. Evo, Poljake, Poljake su pokušali da gurnu na Hersonsko napravljenje, tam, tamo su ogromni gubici kod Ukrajinaca. Oni su, nisu hteli da ratuju, krenuli su nazad, pucali su na, na Ukrajinca i tamo izbio pravi rat između njih. Kod nas nema toga, znači, ili ideš napred ili ideš nazad, ali poštoješ na ređenju. Uh, war is won by those who know what they're fighting for, among among uh, the, the losses themselves as a factor. Uh, there were foreigners who came for money. The Polish have have uh, attempted to to uh, advance on on the in the Kherson direction, but uh, they there was an attempt to push the Polish towards uh, on, on that direction and they had huge losses. They didn't want to fight. They've, they've started going back and they started shooting at the Ukrainians and there was a whole civil war about it. But, uh, but uh, we don't have that kind of a problem. You either go forward or backward, but you know what you're fighting for. Russia will certainly win the war. If Russia went to the war in 2014 or 2015, she would lose it. Russia will be certain to win this war. If it, if Russia entered this war in 2014 or 2015, it would have lost the war. So that was not prepared. It was not prepared. It was not prepared. It was not prepared. It was not Svjetska hazjajstva, kako se to kaže na, na, na srpskom. U glavnom prave hranu, povećali su proizvodnju raketa, tako da svi oni koji misle da će kod Rusije završiti rakete, grdno se varaju. Ima mnogo veš mašina iz koje mogu da vade čipova. Uh, because it wasn't prepared economically, logistically, with food, uh, when they realized that that they're they're gonna they're gonna have to fight a war. The Russian government made a very proper made a right move. They started uh, financing uh, farming homesteads, and they've start they've increased their missile production quite a lot. And and so so they have plenty of washing machines to to use for for those missiles. Well, yeah, I'm sorry because the British government, which the Prime Minister said that Russia. I'm just jesting because the British Prime Minister or, or somebody said that, that they're just using uh, using washing machines, microchips to to get to uh, for for the missiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Ovo isto ima ljudi koji koji se boje, koji bega. Na primjer, od početka specijalne vojne operacije po nekim podacima s teritorije Rusije oko 500.000 ljudi pobegnu u inostranstvo. Jednostavno se boje da odu rat, neki ne veruju to, ali gledajte, 500 hiljada ljudi na državu koja ima 140 miliona, to je manje od statističke greške. There are also some, some people who are running away. At the beginning of the special military operation, according to some, some statistics, there is about 500,000 uh, men who have fled abroad. Some are just afraid to go to war. Some don't believe in it. But 500,000 people uh, for a country with 140 million people is less than a statistical error. Right, right. Now, in the in the Western media, uh, they are now saying that Russia has lost 100,000 soldiers. I have difficulty believing this because it sounds like World War II tier casualties. 
But what do you say to this, that, that uh, Russia has lost 100,000 soldiers so far? Zapadni medijima kažu da je Rusija izgubila oko 100.000 ljudi. Meni je to teško da poverujem. Zvuči kao, ne, zvuči kao neki ubici iz drugog svega rata. Šta vi kažete na to? 100.000 ljudi ubijenim ili ranjenim? Are you, are you talking about the wounded or the killed? Uh, they're saying 100,000 killed. 100.000 ubijenih. Ne, to, to smešno. Pa, najveći ubici su bili na početku rata i to iz jednog prostog razloga što uh, su neki ruski oficiri jako nepravilno shvatili taj rat i krenuli su onako kako nije trebalo. I ti gubici su bili onako solidni, ali kako, kako su hile. Smešna priča. Ali ranjenih je mnogo, ranjenih je mnogo. Ranjenih, ja mislim da zajedno ranjeni ubijeni možda ima oko, možda ima oko što hile. Znači pričamo i Rusija, i Donjecka, i Luganska republika. That's a laughable notion. Uh, the biggest casualties were at the very beginning of the war. Uh, the, the main difference, for, uh, the main reason for this is that uh, some of the Russian officers have just inappropriately approached the whole affair. Uh, the the casualties uh, the casualties were pretty solid, but but the notion that it's one hundred thousand. Oh, it's a hundred. Were, let, no. let me just make a correction for myself. Sorry, they say a hundred thousand uh, dead and injured. Hoće samo da se ispravi, nije ne, rečeno je ipak da je 100.000 ukupno i ranjenih i ubijenih zajedno. Da, da, lako moguće, zato što ranjenih ima mnogo. Znate kako, ovdje ima, ranjeni se računaju ljudi koji su ranjeni, na primjer, iz lakog artiljerijskog oružja i koji posle dve nedelje se vraćaju nazad, na primjer, na front. Ja sam tri puta bio ranjen za vreme ove vojne operacije, Naprijed iz mog bataljona, pola bataljona je bilo ranjeno i skoro svi su se vratili već nazad. Tako da ranjenih je bilo jako mnogo, jako mnogo. Yeah, that's quite possible. There are plenty of wounded. Around mm-hmm. here, you, you, um, in, the, in the statistics of the, the wounded, there are people who have just been hit from a light artillery piece. And, uh, though, uh, and, and in those statistics, you have people who will return to the war, uh, war front in two weeks. I was wounded myself three times, and I uh, and there are plenty of people in my battalion who got wounded in the same way. Uh, there was a lot of wounded that way. Okay, so I kind of want to get into a different subject. It's not entirely different, but it still connects with your your experience in your your life. So I want to go. Hoću da spređe malo drugu temu. Nije baš mnogo potpuno drugačije, ali je ili ima vez sa vama i sa vašim životom. So, when, when I... Ja sam radio operaciju na Vilici, pa ako malo kočim, pa prosto mnogo me boli, teško mi da pričam. I just had a surgery uh, in my jaw, so if I, if I stop for a little bit, that's because it's hurting me a lot. Okay. Well, let me know if you want to stop or, or take a break. Ne, so, ne, it's... okay. PM obezbolivajuće, tako da... Oh, he's already taking something for the, for the pain, so he's good. Okay. Um, when I watched the the movie about you, I noticed that you were in church. So I, I'm going to say that you are a spiritual person. It's a film of Vama. I was in the church. So I that you are a spiritual So how does your religion, uh, how does your religious conviction influence your uh, your uh, decision or your uh, experience as a soldier? Kako vaše religijske ubeđenje utiču na vaše odluke i na vaše vojničko iskustvo? Znate kako, mnogo ima ateista dok ne odu u rat. Kad odu u rat, svi se mola. There are plenty of atheists until they go to war. In the war, everybody prays. Naprimer, Very simple. ja imam stvari koji su muslimani i naprimer na Donbasu mi odemo u džamiju zajedno, pomolimo se ili smo išli u pravoslavnu crkvu ili ima katolika, tako da u ratu to nema nikakve veze, ima veze da li ti veruješ u nešto. Znači ta vera, sama vera ti pomaže da izdržiš razne probleme koji postoje, a na vojnu taktiku ona ne može dotiče, ali baš nikad. I have some, for instance, I have some uh, Muslim friends and they, and uh, we go to, to a mosque together 
and we pray together and we then we go to a church together and we pray together as well there are some Roman Catholics as well in in the in the war none of that matters and ma what matters is what you believe in something the faith alone helps you overcome certain adversities it, it but it can't influence the taxes tactics themselves but how does your particular orthodox faith influence you uh, with regards to the, the war or life itself? Life itself and, and fighting. Both. tactics uh, faith doesn't help about that much faith helps the people uh, that prays uh, and, and people pray so 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 they don't get hit or something for instance uh, I, I I had this one occasion in which seven men around me died and I only I survived with a with only with only a concussion I lost the use of my legs uh, but the fate cannot uh, cannot influence the military tactics. Uh, military tactics are science and mathematics. Uh, fate is something within the man, and it helps with the ordinary life. Uh, in war, not so much. Although we all pray when when there when the, the hard times come. Okay. Now, in the uh, I, I did a little bit of research about your life, and I read that uh, correct me if i'm wrong but you were in the yugoslav military is that correct Yes, I was the last generation of the Yugoslav army, uh, and after that, the, the Yugoslavia collapsed. Uh, now, there, there have been a hundred of titles for, for the army in the meantime, as well as the state. It, it just keeps changing all the time. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about his experience in the Yugoslav military? What can you tell us about your experience in the military? Do you have anything specific, <coughs> sorry, specific in mind? Sure, like uh, which part of the conflict was he in? Was he in uh, Bosnia? Was he in Kosovo? Um, and, uh, and and what and what role did he play in uh, in the conflict? In what part of the conflict was he in? Was he maybe in Bosnia or Kosovo? What was your role in the conflict? In the war in the 90s, Kosovo was not in the war. The war was exclusively Stvari rat je počeo na teritoriji Slovenije, o tome niko ne govori, on nije počeo ni u Hrvatskoj, ni u Bosni, počeo u Sloveniji. E, tako što je Jugoslovenska armija i vlada Jugoslavije rešila da ne ratuje i da izvede vojnike od Ante. Dogovorili su se sa Slovencima da vojnici izađu bez oružja i bez tehnike i kad je Zapad vidio da će to sve da prođe bez rata, jednostavno su poslali ljude i u Dubrovočinskoj ulici su pobili vladu. Uh, during the it was a, during the civil war uh, in the 90s, Kosovo wasn't a, a participant uh, or a belligerent. Uh, the war actually began on the territory of Slovenia. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in Croatia or Bosnia. It began in Slovenia uh, in a way in which uh, so, so that uh, the Yugoslav People's Army decided not to wage war and to just pull the troops out. They had an agreement with the Slovenians to just extract, and with, when the West saw that it's going to all pass without a war, they sent in the volunteers, and and there were there were Yugoslav people army people people's armies uh, 
soldiers that got killed. A da bi na posle toga je sve krenulo u Bosni, uvek ima i ne možemo da kažemo da je u ratu jedna strana sva ispravna, da, druga, da je druga nepravilna. Zato što na svakoj strani u ratu ima budala koje hoće da, da naprave nešto. Uglavnom tako ratovi počinju. We, uh, so every, everything uh, continued in, in Bosnia, but there we cannot, there's always people and we cannot say that in a war there's one side that's completely righteous and correct and the other side is all bad. There are always fools on all sides and this is how wars begin. I u Sarajevu, to je tako grad gde su živjeli zajedno i Hrvati, i Bosnici i Srbi, uh, jako teško je bilo započeti rat. Zatim su Englezi otpravili svoj uh, specnan, svoje sasoce, njihove snajperiste, čiji je zadatak bio da ubijaju civile. Uopšte im nije bilo bitno ko su ti civili, bitno je bilo da bude mnogo mrtvih sa svih strana, uh, da bi se raširila mršnja međunacionalna. In Sarajevo, in Sarajevo, it was harder to actually get people to to start a civil war because they had uh, uh, Croats and Serbs and and, Mos- and Bosnians living alongside each other. So the English have sent in the SAS with the with the assignment to to start the war, and they've used snipers to shoot at everybody, as many civilians as possible, so that they can. It wasn't. It didn't matter who they were. But what mattered was to have as many casualties as possible. Imate memoare uh, jednog bivšeg saradnika CRU, CIE, jednog bivšeg saradnika CIE, koji je izvanično pričao da, da ih je priglasio predsjednik tada Amerike i rekao nije bitno koliko treba para i šta treba da se uradi, važno je da počne građanski rad da se Jugoslavije razvoje. To sad on priča zvanično. Zaboravio sam i vidim. Uh, there are memoirs of, uh, of an ex... Uh... Uh, associate of CIA who was who has publicly and officially told the story that that uh, he was told by the president of the United States of America that it doesn't matter how many how much money is being used for it and and what's needed for it that a civil war it's what matters was what mattered was uh, for a civil war to start and I, but I've, I've forgotten the name uh, I can find the, the, the name of the man itself and I can uh, itself and I can just forward you the, the, the name okay. of the book. Sure thing. So in that war, uh, uh, the participation of those English snipers was what mattered. Is that his answer? Yeah. Okay. But but what exactly did he if he if he doesn't want to answer then I understand, but like what exactly did he do in Yugoslavia? What was his position? Uh Međutim, na primjer, dešavalo se da danas zajedno Hrvati i Srbi raduju protiv Bosanaca, a zavtra isti ti, sutra isti ti Hrvati koji su bili s vama u kupu, zajedno s Bosancima ratuju protiv Srba, zatim Bosanci protiv Bosanaca, građanski rat je jako komplikovana stvar. We were in a civil war. The Croats were waging the, uh, the war for themselves, the Bosnians for themselves, the Serbs for themselves. And what happened was, then, then there were occurrences in which Serbs and Croats fought against the Bosnians. Mm-hmm. Then there were instances in which Croats and Bosnians waged against the Serbs. And then there were Bosnians against Bosnians. So it was a very messy affair. Okay. It looked like a tragic comedy film. It's a tragic comedy, which ended very tragically for a lot of people. Yeah. 
na takmičenja, mnogo vremena smo posle rata probudili zajedno, jer i oni i mi shvatamo da su nas jednostavno veoma umno zavadili i niko ništa dobro nije dobio od toga. For instance, I've, I'm talking to people who used to be my opponents during the war. I've, I'm talking to uh, the very cause that I've, I was fighting against. We went fishing together before the war, and after the war we spent a lot of time together and then we realized that we were basically all uh, very, very cunningly being, being uh, prodded against each other. How, can you elaborate more on that? Like, like how... how is he saying that they were duped in, into into fighting or Možda da možete da malo više o tome jel to znači da su svi bili nasamarčeni da se bore jedni protiv drugih Znate kako pa na Srbe su učili bratstvo i dis a na primjer ja sam bio u Hrvatskoj sa ljudima tamo na pecanju i oni su mi pričali da su njihove dede koje su bile ustaše u drugom svjetskom ratu i učile da će jedan dan da počne rat i da će Hrvatska da dobije državu. U neku, u neku ruku oni su dobitnici u tom ratu jer su dobili državu. Mi smo izgubili deo teritorije koja je vekovno bila naša. Ali teritorije bez ljudi su ništa, ljudi su proterani i lično se nadam da tamo nikad više neće biti nikakvog rata, da se ljude opametili. Da, svi smo mi nasamareni, oni shvataju da su nasamareni, mi ih shvatamo. Uh, međutim, oni koji nisu učestvovali u ratu, oni će uvek da zagovaraju da se neki rat uvijenje. Ne, oni ne znaju koliko je to u stvari strašno. Well, in taught brotherhood and unity. Uh, I've been in, to Croatia and with people there and I've been, we, 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 we would go fishing together. And they, uh, they were told by their grandparents who were Ustaša, members of the Ustaša movement, that one day they will commence a war in Yugoslavia and then they will get the sovereign independent Croatia. Uh, they won because they they've, they've have their independent Croatia now. We have lost because we lost some of the, the territories in which, which we have lived for centuries. Uh, but the territories without people are uh, useless. Uh, personally, I hope that there won't be a war over there uh, any anymore, anytime. And, but yeah, we were all duped uh, in a way, and we, we, we were starting to get this. And, um, even the only those who haven't been in the war uh, are keep keep being the war mongers, uh, be war, keep uh, keep to their war mongering. But they because they don't know how horrible it is. Uh, do you think that a conflict in the Balkans could happen again? Da li mislite da je moguće da se sukup na Balkanu ponovo desi? Zapravo. Mislim, ja nisam čuo. Da, bez... Ja mislim bez ikak problema, zato i Kosovo nije završeno, zato su Bosnu i Hercegovinu i Republiku Srpsku napravili takom kakva jeste, da bi mogli u slučaju potrebe da pokrenu jako brzo rat. I oni i dalje finansiraju ljude koji imaju neke takve ideje o svojoj veličini da su veći od drugih. Onom odnosi na neke nacionaliste. Znači svaki narod treba da bude nacionalista u nekom u nekoj određenoj granici. Znači, moraš da voliš svoju državu, moraš da voliš svoj narod, međutim, kad taj nacionalizam, on često prelazi u nacizam i ljudi ne vide granicu. Dajte im malo para, nalite im malo maži uši kako su oni najstariji, najbolji, najpametniji i oni će jako brzo duđu u rat. Tako da, zapadna propaganda Ko je preuzeo Gebersa i njegovo učenje posle drugog svjetskog rata? Preuzeli su ga zapadnjaci i oni su dobro to izučili i tim se koriste posle drugog svjetskog rata po celom svetu. Tako da bez, bez problema oni mogu ponovo da zapale bomba. Nadam se da neće biti, ali lako mogu. Ja, yeah, without a fuss. Uh, this is why Kosovo hasn't been concluded. This is why Bosnia has been made the way it is. This so that that this can be instigated very quickly. Uh, they're still financing the people who have this this uh, notion of their own grandeur, and that they're better than other people. Uh, and uh, there are some nationalists, but and every everybody every people should have everybody people every people should have should be nationalists to a degree. But you, and you have to like love your people and your country. 
but once this crosses over a certain point, uh, there's Nazism and and people and people not seeing any limit to this. So give them a little money, give them and pour some lies into their ears, and uh, uh, and tell them that they're the oldest and the cleverest, smartest, and they will quickly go to war. This is how the Western propaganda uh, works, and it, it has taken this mo from Goebbels. Uh, uh, the the Goebbels propaganda was taken over by the Westerners, and and, and have been it has been used ever since the end of the Second World War. So yeah, there's no problem about instigating things again. I I really hope they won't, but this is very much possible. <laughs> izučavala i oni se sada zanimaju sa time po celom svetu. Najveća komanda, znači Indijanske 77. brigade, nalazi se trenutno na teritoriju Ukrajine. On this teaching, uh, England has made uh, 70, the 77th brigade. Uh, the brigade has been very much researched. Uh, the biggest uh, the biggest team of the 77th brigade is in Ukraine right now. And, and where does this brigade come from? Oh, that could always be that brigade. Is uh, Kograda? Are you referring to a specific city or something? You know, he just said that this brigade is in Ukraine now. Which now, where does this brigade come from? Rekao je da da se ta brigada treba da nalazi u Ukrajini, ali u kom? Da kako ona dolazi? Ta brigada iz Engleske, ona već funkcioniše nekih 30 godina, ali najveći deo njenih vojnika se trenutno nalazi na Ukrajini. Ona i dalje u Engleskoj da to radi. Uh, it's, it's coming from England. Uh, it's been functioning that way for 30 years, but the, the brunt of their, their soldiers is in Ukraine right, right now, even though it's an English brigade. I see. Uh... Now, if the if a conflict were to ever erupt again in uh, the Balkans, uh, where do you think it would begin? Ako se suko ponovo rasplamsa na Balkanu, gde misli da će početi? Bosna i Hercegovina. Hercegovina. And and why does he think that? Zašto tako misli? Bosna i Hercegovina su napravili tako i kakva jeste da bi mogli lako da započnu rat. I ne dozvoljavaju, na primjer, da se bosanski zločinci, za koje su zločini dokazani, da se oni strpaju u zatvore. Znači, oni su na slobodi, njih finansiraju za trenutak kada će im biti potrebno, ako im budu potrebno. Bosnia has been made away, it was so that a war can be easily restarted. They are not allowing for the Bosnian criminals that have... Uh, whose crimes have been proven to be put in jails, they can be financed on a, at a whim and, and if necessary. Trenutno nemaju oni nikakve potrebe da počinju ratove zato što su preuzeli sve šta im je bilo potrebno. Znači svi rudnici, jedni od najvećih rudnika zlata nalaze se u Srbiji, oni su sada činili su u kanadskom posedu, Na Kosovo je još za vreme Tita zabranjena, su bila velika rudna iskopavanja, to se sad nalazi u rukama Veslija, Klarka i kompanije u kojoj je Medlin Olbright rabotala, tako da za sada sve kod njih funkcioniše. Ako pokušaju to da im oduzmu, tada će rat početi. Inače nemaju nikakve druge razloge za početak rata. Presently there is no need for them to start any wars because they've taken over everything that's necessary for them, all the mines. Uh, we have some of the biggest uh, gold mines. Uh, uh, some of the biggest war, uh, gold mines in uh, in Serbia are in are owned by Canada, by Canadians. Kosovo, uh, on, on in Kosovo itself, Tito during Tito there was uh, there was a prohibition to mine uh, certain certain uh, ores and mines, and uh, all of those are. Presently being owned by Madeleine Albright and Wesley Clark, so right now it's all functioning for them. Should somebody try to take take those away from from them, then they'll they'll start the war. I see. You know, um, of course, I hope it never happens again. Uh, I uh, years ago I interviewed a um, a Serbian veteran of the war in Kosovo, and he told me that. 
the most horrible thing that he saw were uh, decapitated heads. And he also told me about how uh, Albanian terrorists were kidnapping people, kidnapping people for their organs. So I asked him what was the most horrible thing that he that he saw, the most horrible thing that he heard of, and this is what he told me: you know, decapitated heads and and people being kidnapped for their organs. What was the most horrible thing that you saw or experienced when you were fighting in the in that war in the 90s in Yugoslavia wherever it may have been Pre više godina intervjuisao sam srpskog veterana o, o ratu na Kosovu, rekao mi da je najožasnija stvar koju je video su bile obezlavine glave. Rekao mi kako albanski teroristi kinepuju ljude da im vade organe, pitao sam ga šta je bila najožasnija stvar i on mi je to rekao, obezlavine glave i kinepovanje ljudi zbog, zbog organa. Šta je najožasnija stvar koju ste vidjeli u tom ratu 90-ih godina se odvije u Jugoslaviji? Uh, najožasnije, znači u jednom selu u Bosni i Hercegovini, tada u Bosni, tamo. srpsko selo je bilo, tamo su ljudi Nasera Orića zašli u to selo, ubili su sve civile koji su bili tamo, bilo je dece koje su stavili u peć, pekli su ih u peći, nabili su na polac ljude i jedno dete je bilo razapet kao Isus Hristus na vratima Srpske pravoslavne crkve. To je mene jako, jako teško nešto može da potrese, ali to tamo što sam video, to je bilo nešto baš strašno. There was a village in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, there was a Serbian village over there. Uh, the, peop- the men of Nasir Orić has ki- have killed the civilians that were there. There were some kids over there that were put in an oven and they were literally fried in the oven. They were they were uh, put on spikes. One kid was crucified like Jesus Christ on the, uh, the doors of a Serbian Orthodox church. Uh, I'm not easily rattled, but what I've seen over there was, was really horrible. And he saw these things? <laughs> Yes, we were the first one to enter that village. You say that again, sir? Yes, he was the first one to... Uh, he was in the unit that was the first to enter that village. My God. No question. It reminds me of Ukraine with the video of the crucifixion. What's him in Ukraine with the snimmer of the man? Vidite, ako poredite, na primjer, Ukrajinu i Bosnu, e, najviše zločina je bilo u Bosni. E, Ukrajina nije ni, ni blizu toga šta se u Bosni dešava. If we're going to compare Ukraine and Bosnia, there were by far the most crimes in Bosnia. Ukraine doesn't even come close to what, what, what has happened in Bosnia. Uh, I read an article about uh, a massacre that took place in Croatia in the 1990s. I'll go slow, so you can go ahead and tell him that. I'll go slow to make it easier for you. There's a chart called Masako, which is the last year. It's the last year. It's the last year. It's the last year. It was after Operation Storm. It was after Operation Storm. It was after Operation Storm. Is he frozen? Can he hear it? Can he hear us? I think he's frozen. I think we lost him. Goodness. Okay, let's hope we can get. Let's hope we can get a connection back here. Hold on a second. My connection is my connection is working fine. So we oh we lost him. Dang. What happened there? Let me see if I can write. Uh, text message uh, they're saying we can't hear you at all no that was that was uh, an hour ago I just sent him a chat Let's see he just sent me something mm, our internet is gone let's decide now what do you mean let's decide I don't know maybe the mistranslation 
uh, organize. I'm guessing they're, they're, they're trying to basically tell you to somehow scramble, organize, whatever. Oh my god. Well, I hope we can get him back. No. I was enjoying the conversation. No, we'll continue. I hope. Uh -huh. Let's decide now. The word decide, I don't know if that, if that means the same thing uh, as it does in uh, English. I'm guessing it's a nuance on. Uh, yeah. On basically organizing. Seichas Reshim. I don't know what that means. We'll solve it right now. Ah, okay. See, your Russian is pretty good. I'm just letting you know that I'm still live streaming. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, no, no. Okay. Uh. There's a, a Croatian guy who's on the chat, and he clearly does—he clearly does not like Mr. Bedich. But the other Croatian that comes on, uh, Mr. Mi Miocic, he is the day that I actually wanted him on the live stream. He's gone. He's always on my live streams, and now he's not here, so that's too bad. But some Serbs have joined us from uh, Mr. Bedich's page. Des Desimir Maria Marianovic. Uh, oh, the, the, the Croatian actually has corrected me. He says he likes him. Okay. Doesn't dislike him. Okay, that's good. Uh, Mad Riddick says this was awesome. There's a bunch of people up on here, but they're kind of having like, conversations amongst themselves. Um, but let's see. Hopefully we can... We can get him back on. Uh, let me see if I can call him up again. Uh, Kursman Dasovic says hello. Zdravo. That's the one word I, I learned, I, and, I, and that's it. I, I know this word. I'm going to go on with it. Let's see. Uh, let me see if I can call him up. Connection issues. He says... Okay, let me ask him something. Let me get some more coffee. Okay. Hello, Stefan Ignatov. Hello, Goran Marko. I don't think you're bad luck. Uh, hello, Gradianin, Gradianin Loznice. He says uh, a couple of minutes. Great. Uh, we got a bunch of people writing comments. Ivan, Ivan Velichkovic, Goran Marko, Desimir Maranjovic. Uh, some guy named Battler has something in, I'm guessing, Croatian. Uh, I, I don't understand him, though. Tako je lutko date seo svet razume zdravo. That's right, baby, so that the whole world can understand you. Is that what he said? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, DJ, it's a local joke. DJ Energy Vox says LP from Croatia. Ivan Velichkovic uh, has Croatian and Serbian flag next to each other. Stefan Ignatov says, thank you for finding the true greeting greetings from Serbia. Goran Marko says, maybe I am bad luck. Gadjanin Loznice says hello. Deba Radovan does not understand the purpose of this conversation. Okay. 
Chris Mendasovic says hello. That was. Uh, Robbie ninety one is also has also been watching us since the beginning. He's from Macedonia, by the way. He's from he's from well, Fairom. I think they, uh, I think there, there might have been a, a misunderstanding between the two of you. I think think that when, when you asked him about what was your role and position, I, uh, I'm guessing that that he didn't pick up on on, on, yeah. on that being a question about his rank and his military role. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. I'm wondering maybe he doesn't want to talk about it. Oh. I mean. Some of it should be classified. Yeah, okay. Uh, Pavle Krubrik says... Oh, never mind. Take your headphones off. Can you hear? Oh, never mind. He's gone. Dude, Theo, yeah, killing that accent. I'm, I try to get the, the words right. It's kind of like reading Spanish, actually. It's actually not that. When it comes to pronunciation, it's not that different. We have, I have 235 people in this chat. I've never had more people on ever. I've never had this number before, so that's uh, pretty good. This is pretty good, guys. And uh, I'm going to be editing this interview to make it more uh, like a documentary, like a short documentary with uh, music and B-roll, and uh, I think that'll be good. I think that'll be good. But it's going to take me some time to do that because editing is uh, quite challenging. Hello, Alice M. Zarko Diano, Diano. I can't say this last name. Diano Vicky. The, the J's always confuse me. Is it like a Y? Diano Vicky. Yeah. Okay, so we have a but. I have we have two hundred thirty-five people in the chat. I've never had that many people before, so that's pretty good. Uh, mostly everybody here is from uh, is from the Balkans. Uh, a lot of interesting uh, comments. So. I guess I'll just read some of them now as we wait. Um, this guy says, let me see here. Desmir Marjanovic says, Pozdrav za Dekia. You know what that means? Pozdrav za Dekia? Just greetings, greetings. Ah, to okay. Dekia. Let's see here. Uh, Gradianen Loznice says, "Small town in western Serbia." I guess that's where he's where he's coming from. Horvat David says, "Hello." Um, I already read that already. Dario Botice says, "Hello from Croatia." Hello, zdravo. Uh, Alfonso Nanuk says you are deceived with Chetnik propaganda. The best deception there is. <laughs> uh, mi Man, I can't scroll up here. Mil Milanzer says where is Deki? Uh, there's some technical issues, but he'll be back, God willing. Um, 
Kurisman Dasovic says, best gun in your opinion. I'll ask him that when he gets back. Uh, Battler says, Kav, uh, Kakvo ya tevoye mislanye o desa... I can't read this. Desavanyema u Ukraine. What, what is your opinion on the, the goings on in Ukraine? Oh. I don't know. I, it's a, it's a, I do know, but that uh, takes a long answer. But I definitely believe... I definitely understand why Russia did what it did because it doesn't want to be completely surrounded by NATO. Yeah. Emmanuel Shahi. Oh, he's back. Let me see. Let me uh, let me get him back. Um, Good morning. Hello. <laughs> Mr. Are you hearing us? Yes, I hear yeah, you. Yes. Much. Uh, they, they lost internet and everything just died. Ah, okay. The man just lost a year of his life just trying to get, get everything back to work. Oh, I see. Well, that's, well I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but we're glad to have you back on. Uh, it looks like uh, my whole chat is, is being taken over by uh, Serbs and Croatians, so this is a good thing. A little bit, yes. Uh, immediately when your internet got cut off, a Croatian guy said that you were running away from the from the question, but I, I didn't believe that. Čim je nestao vama internet, on me je jedan hrvat rekao da ste vi pobjegli od, od, od pitanja, a ja sam znao da to nije dačno. Ne, ne znam šta ste čuli posljednje kad je crkao internet. Uh, I, I don't know what, what you heard last when the, the, when the internet went out. He, uh, a Cro some Croatian guy who said that, uh, that uh, Deki ran away from the, from the question about Operation Storm. Yeah, but he was asking about what what, we, what what was that we were hearing the last, so we can continue. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, I was asking him a question uh, in regards to the future of the Balkans. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Uh, so I read an article about, uh, about Operation Storm, and it talked about how uh, there was a massacre that took place after Operation Storm in which Croatian soldiers massacred uh, Serbian villagers. Uh, so I've, I've read this article. I'm going to go to Operation Luja. I'm going to go to Operation Luja. I'm Kao što već rekao, nema strane koja ih nije činila. Uvek ima ljudi uh, koji će ili iz ideala, ili zbog novce, ili zbog bilo čega da naprave ratne zločine. U, u građanskom ratu svi prave ratne zločine. Pravi su i Srbi, i Hrvati, i Bosanci, svi. Tako da uh, svako ima neke svoje razloge za to. Ja to nikad ne mogu opravdati. Znači, prvog svog borca koga bi video da se iživljava na civilima ja bih ga lično ubio. Ali to ne znači da, da svi tako razmišljaju. Well, uh, in civil, in a civil, in every war you have war crimes. Uh, every, there isn't a single side or party to, to war that hasn't done them, that hasn't committed the crimes. There are always people who will commit them for ideals or for money or for any reason. Uh, in a civil war, everybody makes uh, sorry, uh, uh, does war crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Croats, Serbs, Croats, and Bosnians, all of them. Everybody has their reasons. I cannot condone this. Right. Uh, the, if I saw, uh, if I saw a single fighter on my side uh, uh, commit war crimes, I will kill him myself. But not everybody thinks like this. Idealno sprovedena uh, sa hrvatske strane, međutim da bi ona potpuno uspjela, tu je trebala da bude velika predaja sa strane srpskog 
posla, znači pričamo i u rukovodstvu Srbije i oni su im mnogo pomogli u tome. Zašto se posle te operacije pojavili zločini na civilima? Jednostavno su Hrvati hteli da kažu više vas ne želimo ovde. Ubili su mnogo ljudi, snimili su to na kameru, pustili su na internet i to je bila poruka jasna za budućnost svih Srba koji su planirali da se vrati. The operation storm was ideally uh, its planning was ideal and its execution was ideal on the on the creation side but for it to work there had to be a huge treason on the side of the Serbian government uh, Serbian leadership uh, they've helped them uh, helped them about it a lot uh, now as to as to why the the crimes against the civilians uh, have happened afterwards the Croats wanted to make a, a, a statement and to tell the Serbs, you're not wanted anymore. Uh, they've broadcast this to the internet and that was the clear message. So, uh, I remember reading this story and it and it, it, it talked about how before the villagers were, were killed, the, the executioner drew a U on the ground and he said, this U is the golden letter representing the Ustasha, and then he killed them. So my question to you is, do you see Croatia similar to Ukraine in the sense that Ukraine still has this political ideology that's akin to, to Nazism, and Croatia has a political ideology that's still connected to the Ustasha, or it admires the Ustasha? I read the story uh, that right before. Uh, uh, you're, 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 it's a little, yeah, yeah, never mind. Go ahead. Čitao sam tu priču, bila je kako pre nego što su ti civili bili ubijeni, jedan od tih počinilaca je bio napisao U na zemlji i rekao je ovo slovo je zlatom ispisano i ubio je te ljude. I sad i to me vodi ka pitanju. Da li vidite Hrvatsku kao sličnu Ukrajini u tom smislu da Ukrajina ima još tu političku ideologiju nalik nacizmu, a Hrvatska takođe ima tu neku ideologiju koja je nalik nacizmu i koja veliča nacizmu? Vidite, velika razlika postoji. Ja sam pričao o tome, ne znam da li ste čuli, kad se veza prekinula, veliki ratni zločini su vršeni na civilima u Bosni i Hercegovini. Rađeni su i u Hrvatskoj, ali mnogo manje nego u Bosni i Hercegovini. Manje je iživljavanja nad ljudima na teritoriju Ukrajine. Međutim, nacizam na teritoriju Ukrajine je mnogo, mnogo veći nego što je bio na teritoriji Hrvatske. Mnogo veći. Da, tamo nas ne vole i ne žele da žive sa Srbima. Znaju da su dobili državu zahvaljujući našem predsjedniku Miloševiću koji je tamo mnogo šta izdao. Međutim, on je morao da uđe u te ratove, ali nije smeo tako da se dogovara i da preda taj narod. Tako da, Hrvati, da, oni, pričamo sad, imate normalnih ljudi koji ne žele ratove, imate ljudi koji žele, ja mrzim ratove, ali jevi ga nekad moraš da ratoješ da bi se nešto dobilo, da bi se nešto zustavilo. There's a, there's a major difference. I've talked about this already. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about, uh, I, was, I was talking about it before the connection <clears throat> broke. So uh, there were very big uh, crimes against civilians in Bosnia. There were some in Croatia as well, but way more in Bosnia itself. Uh, there was a, a lot less of torturing of people on the territory of Ukraine by comparison. Uh, but the, the Nazi ideology on the territory of Ukraine is way bigger than, than it was in Croatia. Yes, they didn't want to live with Serbs over there, but, uh, and yes, they, they have uh, gotten their their country, independent country, uh, thanks to our president Milosevic, who was betrayed a lot. So he had to enter the wars, but he, he just mustn't have uh, uh, betrayed that people over there the way he did. So yes, the Croatians got it. Uh, as, yes, some Croatians do do want uh, to wage more war, uh, but they're normal people as well. So 
fuck it, uh, uh, fuck it. You sometimes just have to wage war, whether it's to gain something or to prevent something. Ne mogu da kažem da je u Hrvatskoj državna ideologija bila nacizam kao što je na teritoriju Ukrajine. Na Ukrajini je to mnogo, mnogo gore, mnogo izraženije. I can't say that in Croatian, Croatia there was a state ideology that was basically Nazi, like in, in the, like the way in the way in which it is in Ukraine. And in Ukraine it's way way worse. Uh, why do you say that it's worse? Zato što je gore. Zato što je gore. Tamo je tamo je to je država. Znači država propagira nacizam. Baš država, bukvalno država, ne pojedinačni bataljoni, pojedinačni komandiri ili neki političari, to je državna ideologija. U Hrvatskoj nije, nacizam nije bio državna ideologija, ovde jeste. Because it's the state, the state is propagating Nazism. Literally the state, the state itself. Not, uh, not single battalions or, or certain commanders or politicians. In Croatia it wasn't actually state driven. I see. Um, now, one thing I've noticed in Europe today is the rise of Germany. Germany has been growing uh, militarily and becoming more and more uh, independent and sees itself as basically the future defender of Europe. And I'm wondering, how does he see... Do you, do, do you think that Germany will rise again like it did in the past? Primetio sam da u Evropi postoji uspon Nemačke. Nemačka jača vojno i postaje nezdravista i vidi sebe kao budućeg, budućeg branijaca Evrope. Pa se pitam, da li mislite da će Nemačka da, da se uspe ponovo? Vidite, kad je Olja snimala film Rad snajpera, prvi intervju koji sam joj dao, ona je meni rekla da sam ja neki radikalni ludak. When, we, when Olya was making that film, War of Snipers, Snipers War, uh, at the, uh, right after I gave her the first interview, she said that I'm, a, I'm some kind of a radical lunatic. Zašto je to rekla? Rekla je zato što sam joj to intervju objasnio da rat u Siriji, Libiji, uh, je rat ne zbog toga da bi Amerika nešto krala odande, nego da bi velike kolonije iz Peglica došle u Evropu i oslabile Evropu. Uh, so why did she say it? Because I've told her that the war in Syria and Libya wasn't a war uh, that was being waged so that the U.S. would steal something, but so that huge columns of refugees would come to Europe and weaken Europe. I tada još nisu bilo uvedene sankcije. Tad sam joj rekao da će Amerika terati Evropu kroz Međunarodni monetarni fund, terati Evropu da uvodi sankcije Rusiji. I to iz jednog prostog razloga da bi oslabila i Rusija i Evropa, u to vreme Amerika će trgovati sa Rusijom kao da se ništa ne dešava, pričamo nezvaniču. I danas je Amerika najveći spolnotrgovinski, možemo reći, kupac Rusije. This is when the sanctions were instituted, yet... I've told her that uh, the United States would would uh, force Europe through IMF uh, to institute sanctions to Russia so that they will weaken both Russia and Europe. Mm. Uh, but now, and, and that the United States will actually, but the, the United States will continue on trading with Russia unofficially. Uh, and that America will become the single biggest buyer of Russian goods. Zašto sam joj rekao da će to biti tako? Posle sam ja objasnio, ona je rekla da se ja budala, međutim danas kaže da sve, ja sam joj pričao da će biti BLM, šta će sve da se desi. Nisam nazivao BLM, ali tipa taka pokreće da se pojavi. I sve se to dešavalo zato što je Nemačka postajala samostalna i jaka država, a Americi ne treba Nemačka samostalna i jaka. Uh, what, I, what, what did I tell this to her? Uh, I, I, later I would explain to her. Uh, she and, and she would say that I'm a fool. But uh, today she says that she says that he was right. I've told her that 
that uh, there's going to be something like BLM. Now, uh, I didn't know what it was going to be called BLM, but a bit of movement like that. Uh, all of this was happening because uh, uh, because Germany was becoming independent and, and an independent and a strong country. America doesn't need an independent and strong Germany. I sada, na, na primjer, pre godinu dana Nemačka je bila jaka i dosta nezavisna država, a sada je Nemačka veoma slaba i uopšte nije nezavisna država. Tako da u ovom ratu koji se trenutno vodi, Amerika je jedan od većih pobednika. Znači pričamo o biznisu Amerike. Amerika kao država, ona ne postoji. To je jedna velika korporacija koju rukovode ljudi i američka armija to je prosto čeveka tih ljudi koji rukovode tamo. Sada ne ulazimo duboko u sve to. Uh, and now, now uh, uh, for example, a year ago, Germany was very strong and, and quite independent, but now Germany is very weak and it's not an independent state at all. So in this war that's being waged by America, uh, uh, this being waged, America is uh, is one of the biggest winners. Well, we were talking about, about this in, in terms of business. Mm -hmm. America as a state doesn't exist. It's a huge corporation that's being governed by people. Izvite, o, o, poslije nisam čuo, uh, rekli ste nešto uče kao tako nešto, nisam, nisam sigurno. Ne uče kao, nego uh, to je časna vojna kompanija, znači kao Blackwater, znači američka armija je u stvari jednostavno plaćenička, plaćenička vojska tih biznismena koji drža Amerika. Amerika realno kao država, ona davno ne postoji. I... So it's it's the honorable military company like Blackwater. American Army is a mercenary army of, 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 of led by businessmen that that run it. But America as a state has been gone for a long while now. I na primjer Amerika ne uništava sada samo Evropu i Rusiju. Trudi se sa Rusijom je pogrešila. Amerika uništava srednji sloj u samoj Americi zato što su ljudi počeli lepo da žive a kapitalizmu to ne odgovara i sada se dešavaju jako veliki problemi koji lako mogu da dovedu do građanskog rata u Americi što taj biznis tamo ne trpi srednji sloj, jednostavno ne sme da postoji. So, for example, America is not only destroying Europe and Russia, it is trying to destroy Russia, but it's also destroying uh, the middle class in, the, in America itself. People have begun uh, uh, living nicely and cozily over there, but capitalism doesn't doesn't like this. It do doesn't behoove capitalism. So there are great problems that can, uh, that can over there in America that can lead to a civil war because the business, the business doesn't uh, put up with the middle class, just can't have it around. Uh, how does he, what does he see in the future for the world? Does he does he see a multipolar world? Does he see uh, the American Empire eventually collapsing? How does he see the the, the future? Kako vi vidite budućnost sveta? Da li vidite neki multipolarni svet ili možda kolaps tako zvane američke imperije? Kako vi vidite budućnost? Ne, kolaps američke imperije ne može da proizađe zato što treba shvatiti šta je Americi potrebno. Znači ne američkom narodu, nego tim amerikancima koji sada vode Ameriku. Amerika je velika država sa velikim mogućnostima i sa velikim vojnim potencijalom. Znači ona neće propasti, to je sigurno. Niko god ljudi pričaju da je Amerika pri propasti, od toga nema ništa. Of, of uh, American collapse just cannot just happen because what, what people need to realize that it is that America uh, just need, need uh, would take a lot to to collapse. Uh, not the people itself, but but the Amer the Americans that, that are leading it, they're leading the country. Uh, it's a huge country with huge possibilities and a huge military potential. So it won't it, it certainly won't collapse entirely. Međutim, mir se, svet se promenio zato što je Amerika jedina bila takva velika i jaka. Umeđu vremenu je mnogo postalo veliki, mnogo je, da, mnogo je postalo velikih igrača na svetskoj sceni. To je Rusija jedan od glavnih, Rusija i Kina. Rusija vojno, Kina ekonomski, zatim se tu dižu već Indija, velike zemlje, tako da multipolarni sveće da 
da promeni mnoga šta, mnogo čega u svetu, međutim, da će napraviti neki svet koji će da živi u miru, od toga nema ništa. Znači, ratovi će kako se vodili, tako će se voditi, tako će se praviti i oni su uglavnom da bi se povećao kapital onih koji imaju već veoma mnogo. Uh, the world has changed because uh, America, uh, ever since ever since America has been the one and single superpower, uh, holding all the might. But in the meantime, a lot of big players have entered the world stage. Russia is one of them, Russia and China, Russia militarily, China economically. There's also India that's rising. Uh, there, are, there are other, uh, sorry, uh, large countries. And the multi multipolar world will change a lot. But in the meantime, uh, the notion that, that it's going to be change the world into something that's so peaceful, no, the wars are going to, are going to just continue happening the way they, they are already. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no certainty of, of actual permanent peace coming. As to how they're going to be wa- waged, well, they're going to be waged over increasing the capital. And, uh, uh, oh, sorry, was he to say something? It's the next calendar. He was just already uh, uh, asking somebody to bring him some coffee. Oh. Uh, now, I agree that there is no guarantee for peace in the future. Uh, if there is a, a world war, which I believe there will be, who do you think will be the the parties involved, the belligerents? Slažu se da nema garancije za mir u budućnosti, ali ako bude bilo svetskog rata, koje misle će biti strane u tom ratu? treba velike sile, velike vojne sile, to su Amerika, Rusija, Kina, Turska uh, i Indija. To su najveće vojne sile trenutno koje postoje. Uh, Turska, ona ne voli nikoga. Znači, Turci su biznismeni i u ovom ratu su to pokazali. Oni će da drže stranu onih uh, od kojih mogu da imaju koristi. Turci bi sarađivali sa, na primjer, sa NATO paktom u slučaju nekog velikog rata, ako bi znali da mogu da dobiju Krim i druge teritorije. Uh, what? So the, the large powers being America and Russia and, and China and Turkey and India, uh, they would be the sides. Those are the largest military powers that are presently around the world. Turkey itself doesn't like anybody else. Uh, Turkey, Turks are all businessmen, uh, and, and they've shown this in this war. They, they just take the side of whoever is benefiting them. They would have, uh, they would have cooperated with NATO should, should, uh, should they, they, they thought that they had a real prospect at regaining Crimea and other territories. Crimea is a big avion and a very important strategic point. Krenuo neki veliki rat, uveren sam 100% da Rusija, Kina i Indija bi bili saveznici u tom ratu, zato što oni znaju da, Kinezi jako dobro znaju da u slučaju da Rusija izgubi rat, oni su sledeći. Zato Kinezi pomažu Rusiji ne toliko na diplomatskom, nego i na, da bi obišli sankcije na, na ekonomskom planu. Is the famous uh, aircraft carrier and, a, and an immensely important strategic spot point. Uh, if there was going to be a large war, I'm, co- I'm convinced that Russia, China and India would be allies uh, because they know, especially the Chinese know very well that in case uh, Russia was to lose, they would be next. Uh, this is why Chinese are helping them, not only diplomatically, but also economically in circumventing the, the sanctions. Now, who do you think... Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. War is a, is a catastrophe. There, all that it takes is one lunatic, for one lunatic to launch a single uh, nuclear bomb and there, there, there you go, there's no world anymore. That's a good point, yes. All it takes is one event and that reminds me of what took place recently in Poland. What are his thoughts on the uh, the story in which uh, a missile launched from Ukraine hit Poland? 
To je dobar point, je dovoljan samo jedan događaj. I što je posebno na ovo što se ovaj događaju u Poljskoj? Šta mislite o ovoj raketi koja je bila lansirana na Poljsku? Vidite, to je planirana akcija. To može da se dokaže i iz više razloga. Prvo, Ukrajina gubi ovaj rat. Ona ga gubi kako god da se okrene, u svakom slučaju. Poljaci, ne znam da li bi u Americi imate tu informaciju, međutim, oni su sa Ukrajincima potpisali dogovor da poljska policija može na teritoriji Ukrajine da funkcioniše, da radi sve što radi ukrajinska policija. It was a planned affair. And this can be proven for, uh, from many angles. Uh, Ukraine is losing the war. It's losing the war with whichever way you look at it. Uh, Poland, I don't know if you have this information in the United States, but there's an agreement that the Polish police can do whatever it wants on the territory of Ukraine. I didn't know that. Polska, da, to smo proš, uh, pre 5-6 meseci potpisali. This was signed five or six months ago. Uh, Poljska, ona hoće da zauzme deo zapadne Ukrajine koji uh, računa da je to njihova teritorija i ona istorijski jeste uh, poljska teritorija. Uh, Poland, this, uh, Poland wants to take a part of Ukraine that it just regards as a part of its own territory, which it historically is, the western part. I ja sam uveren da su Poljaci zajedno sa, sa Ukrajincima isplanirali ceo taj napad. Zašto? Zašto to kažem? Vidite, ovo je Poljska, ovo je Ukrajina. Ruske rakete lete sa ove strane. Kako može protiv avionska raketa, umjesto da leti tamo, da odleti vamo? Zna, ispada da je ona pokušala da sruši e, raketu koja je ispaljena s teritorije Poljske. N- n- nema nikakvog logičnog razloga da ta raketa uopšte odleti na Poljsku, te dve rakete. Ne postoji razlog. One su ispaljene konkretno sa ciljem da ubiju Poljake i da uvuku NATO u rat ili da Poljska ima opravdanje za svoju armiju koja se već nalazi na teritoriji Ukrajine. Međutim, Zapad je shvatio da to može jako loša se završi. Verujem da je bio, bilo tu i razgovora Putina sa nekim a, zapadnim a, liderima, uglavnom završilo se sve na najbolji mogući način. I'm convinced that the Polish had this planned out with the Ukrainians, uh, the whole attack. attack. Um, see, this is, this is Ukraine, this is Poland. Russian missiles are coming from over there. So how can um, a, an anti-air missile fly from over here? It, it just looks like it, it, it attempted to uh, hit a, a missile that is coming from the territory of Poland, which just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, the missiles were were uh, flying uh, with the purpose of killing those Polish people so that they would get NATO to start a war, and and uh, the Poland had a had a motivation of getting getting uh, uh, NATO in, into the war. Uh, so the Poland wanted to, wanted to cast his belly to enter yes, the war. Yes, yes. The West has realized that this can end end very badly. I believe that there were some talks between Putin and the Western leaders about it, and it all came out the best way possible at the end. Yes, I agree with you on that. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I read um, uh, a statement from a Polish uh, lawyer, a famous Polish lawyer, who himself said that there was a secret agreement uh, basically between uh, Poland and Hungary that uh, if the war in Ukraine got bad enough, Poland would settle troops, would deploy troops into western Ukraine and basically take uh, parts that used to belong to Poland, like Lvov. Da Poljska postavi svoje trupe i uzme delove Poljske koji su istorijski bili njeni, kao što je Ljubov. No, ja, ja ne znam da li je bilo nekih dogovora, međutim Poljaci ne kriju da je to njihova želja. I po mom ličnom mišljenju najbolje bi bilo ako bi Ukrajina će u svakom slučaju kapitulirati, pitanje je samo kako će kapitulirati i koliko će izgubiti teritorije za to vreme. Ali naj, po mom ličnom mišljenju, najidealnije je zapadnu Ukrajinu predati Poljacima i zatim sve ove naciste odavde oterati tamo, znači koji su u ratu, 
i nek se Poljaci tamo je, nek se Poljaci tamo muče sa njima kako znaju i umeju. A deo teritorije ostaviti ukrajinskim jer neko mora da vraća dugove koje su zadužene. I don't know whether there were some some uh, agreements uh, over that, but uh, the Polish are not hiding that that's that's a wish of theirs. Uh, according to my, my in my opinion, uh, Ukraine is going to capitulate either way, and they're going to lose territories either way. The most ideal outcome would be for uh, to just hand over the West to Ukraine to the Polish and just to chase off all the Nazis to go and and for them to just handle each other and have, have problems with each other. Mm -hmm. A part of territory should be left for the Ukrainians because somebody has to pay all those debts. So that, that leads me to another question. Uh, when do you think th uh, the war will not necessarily end, but at least come to a ceasefire? You know, the question is, when do Ovdje, ja mislim da tu primjeri ne postoji, e, taj rat mora se završi vojnom okopu. Gde god bi bila granica Ukrajine takva kakva je danas sa Ruskom federacijom ili sa nekim drugim oblastima, Zapad će finansirati sa oružjem i slaći ljude tamo i uvek će biti problema. E, rat bi se završio kad bi Rusija htjela da rato je tako kako bi trebao da se vodi rat. Znači da krene avijacija kako je potrebno da se uništava sve pred sobom i za mesec dana bi rat bio gotov. Međutim, Rusija ratuje tako kao niko, niko nikad nije ratovao na taj način da se štite ljudi toliko koliko se štite sad na tim teritorijama. Mi, znači lično mi kad smo išli, ja sam bio na Kijevskom pravcu, tamo mi smo dolazili do Kijeva samog, imali smo predeljene zadatke, znači nama je jako uh, onemogućavalo pravilan rad, naređenje naših komandira da se prema civilima mora odnositi, znači mi kad znamo da u nekom nasiljenom punktu ima uh, terorist ili diverzanata, ne možemo funkcionisati kako treba funkcioniša armija, nego mora sve kulturno, sve filmno, fino, to, to jako smeta i to usporava kraj rata. Uh, I don't think that there's a, a place to have any truce about it. Uh, it has to be over with a military victory. Uh, whatever there would be a border between between the Russian Federation and, and Ukraine, the, the West will always be, just be financing it with, with guns and, and, and it will keep sending men and there will be, there will be problems. Uh, the war would end if the war would be waged properly. Uh, and it would just just immediately be over. And uh, if if there was uh, the, the air force uh, just 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 working its thing, and it it would have been done in a month. But uh, the war is not being waged as it should be. Uh, there's a there's a there's there's the imperative of protecting people on all those territories. We personally, when we were we were almost at Kiev. Uh, we were we were reaching at the Kiev itself, and we had assignments, but uh, we were prevented and unable to uh, to properly wage war uh, because the commanders had this this uh, order to treat the civilians with utmost uh, utmost um, care. Uh, so when we would know that there are terrorists or, or, or diversionary force diversionary forces somewhere, uh, we we just couldn't operate. Uh, we, uh, everything had to be done extremely nicely. And this is just slowing, uh, grinding the war to a halt, slowing it immensely. Takođe, Rusija ima prednosti, ne prednosti, ima koristi od toga što ovaj rat ide malo duže već. Ako bi se brzo završio, ne bi se očistili redovi u ruskoj armiji i u ruskoj politici. Uh, videlo se koliko ima oficira koji nisu kompetentni da vode armiju, mnogi su uhapšeni, uh, mnogo je ljudi smenjeno, mnogo izdajica pronađeno, 
Tako da je taj rat doneo mnogo čega dobrog Rusiji i što duže traje sve više i više se čisti, znači ovde isto ima korupcije, tako kaže da ne postoji korupcija u Rusiji, taj ili budala ili maža je namerno, korupcija ima svuda, međutim sad sve to izlazi na videlo, sve izlazi na videlo i jedino što se meni sviđa od svega toga je što te ljude hapse, znači Rusija se čisti od smeća koje se godinama skupaju. Koliko god ljudi na zapadu pričali da je Rusija ne demokratska država, Rusija je jedna veoma liberalno kapitalistička država. I to je velo do mogih problema koji su isplivali na videlo s ovim vratom. Osno, je li benefit u Rusiji? from uh, this war carrying on. If, uh, if the war was to be concluded sooner than rather than later, uh, there wouldn't be a purging within the ranks of the Russian army and among the Russian politicians. Uh, this war brought to light uh, some of the incompetent officers. There have been a lot of people who have been replaced and fired. There have been a lot of traitors that were arrested. Uh, so there, that's a very, that's a, a lot of that's some of the the good a lot of good that that this war brought to russia uh the longer it lasts the more they uh, uh, this trash will be just swept clean uh, those who say that there there's no corruption in russian federation is either a fool or a willful liar um now everything is being brought to light what i like about it is that these people are getting arrested Russia is being purged from its trash. Now, as much as the people in the West are saying that uh, Russia is a non-democratic country, no, uh, Russia is a very liberal capitalist country, and this has led to a lot of problems. Okay, and that leads me to another question that I have. Uh, when this war, whenever that may be, comes to a negotiation and a peace settlement, what do you think Russia will get out of Ukraine as far as territory goes? koje su proglašene ruskom teritorijom i ja sam uveren 100% da će Odesa isto od oblast Odese da će postati ruska teritorija. Lično moje mišljenje Odesa, verovatno i Pridnestrovlje, zato što Moldavija sama sebi pravi probleme, tamo će narod da se podigne i da traže prisjedinjenje Rusiji zato što im je jako teško trenutno da žive. A Odesa, ona je jako važan grad i uvek je to bio tako, i jevrijsko, prorusijski grad. I oni će ići u Rusiju 100%. Znači, kad se rad završi, oni će da traže prisjedinjenje Rusiji. Ja uveren sam milijon posto. Za druge teritorije ne znam, ali mislim da to oće. Teritorijs da je... Znači, 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 znač of the Russian Federation. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, Pridnestrovje as well, because Mold uh, Moldavia is making a lot of problems and the people over there are just going to rebel. They're going to just uh, uh, hold a referendum and, and ask to be annexed by the by the by Russian Federation. Odessa has always been a very important territory. It's a Jewish pro-Russian uh, uh, place. And it's 100% going to go to Russia. They're just going to vote and and and, and uh, join Russia. And it's going to be there's going to be a one one million percent. I'm certain. As for other territories, I just don't know. So he go ahead. Uh, is what? the time over over at your place? It is uh, 1 14 p.m. Is it too late where you're at? Jedan sat i 40 minuta popodne. Al vam previše kasno tu da ste vi. Ne, ja vidim da čovjek zeva, rekao, možda je tamo jako kasno. On je sviđa, da 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 je svi
Ja bih volao da ovaj, ovaj, ovaj razgovor postoje neko god je moguće, ja ne možem ovaj. To je nekakav problem, vremena imamo, tako da... Okay, great. Um, now, here's another question that I have. So when the war finally comes to a conclusion, let's say uh, Russia gets Donbass, uh, Luhansk and Donetsk become a part of the Russian Federation. What will have? How will the far right, or w- 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 would there be a violent reaction in Ukraine from the from the far right, from the ultra nationalist against Zelensky? <laughs> Dobro se vodi ka drugom pitanju. Kada se sve ovo završi, recimo sad da Rusija, da Rusija ovaj, pobedi i da Donetska republika i Luganska republika se, se ovaj, prihvati da su, da su izgubljene, a, kako će ta ekstremna desnica reagovati? Hoće li ona, on, on, kako će se ono krenuti poti Zelenskog? I sam, samo malo napomene, ja, ja bih vas ljubozno molio da samo imamo kraće segmente i meni je došlo ruke kada otkud sam se ovo dopište. Aha, ti kusaš još? Pa ne mogu da popati drugačije. Uh, the far right is already against Zelensky, but they know full well that Zelensky just isn't in control of anything. Uh, u aprilu mesecu kad je Zelenski teo da pregovara njega su odveli Amerikanci s teritorije uh, Ukrajine, odveli su ga bili u Polsku i oni su tada donosili rešenje i od tada ih oni donose do današnjeg. So in April when he wanted to negotiate it was the Americans that took him out of Ukraine into Poland and ever since they have, ever since they have been uh in charge of things that, that that's that's that since then that they've been in charge complete charge a svi nacionalistički bataljoni oni su objedinjeni i oni su pod kontrolom SBU to niko ne krije to je javno javno rečeno tamo tako SBU to je služba bezbednosti Ukrajine all the ukrainian uh, uh nazi battalions are all under the the control of the ukrainian uh, intelligence uh, security services and this is a widely known fact tako da kontroli kontrolisani zelenski i kontrolisani su nacionalni bataljoni uh, šta će se desiti pri kraju rata zelenskom treba da se sudi zelenskog su mogli ubiti rusi milion puta do sada nisu želeli so, so uh, both Zelensky and the national battalions are under control. What will happen at, at the end of the war, the Zelensky needs to be trialed. Uh, but uh, the Russians could have taken him out plenty of times. Kad dođe vreme da Ukrajina izgubi taj rat, ja mislim da će ljudi koji trenutno štite Zelensku truditi se svim sredstvima da ga ubiju, da ne bi živ pao u ruke i da ne bi išao na sud. Kad ode na sud, on će tada morati da kaže koga je držao, koga je finansirao, ko je davao naređenje. So when the time comes for Ukraine to lose, the people uh, securing Zelensky will have to kill him uh, so that he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, be arrested alive. Because if he was to brought a brought a court and he would just have to confess who was keeping him, he was controlling him, managing him and financing him. I see. So he he sees the the ultra nationalist just killing Zelensky in the future. Znači vi vidite to da će ultra nacionalisti da na kraju ubiju za nekog neku vrstu. Pa ja se nadam da će on biti dovoljno pametan da im nekako pobegne ako uspe i da će ostati živ, da će doživjeti sud. Hope that he will be smart enough to somehow just get away from them and then and to stay alive so that that he will uh, be brought to trial. Gotcha. Uh, and now I have another question for him. Uh, he brought up Turkey. He brought up Turkey. Do you think that the Ottoman Empire will come back? Do you think that Turkey will, will revive its empire again or, or at least try? Uh-huh. Oni to žele, ali da bi vratili Osmansko carstvo, znači Evropa mora da bude uništena ekonomski i vojno u potpunosti i Rusija treba da bude uništena vojno i ekonomski u 
za tako da od toga nema ništa. Uh, so they, they would like to see that happen, the, the Ottoman Empire brought back, but for that to happen, to transpire, the Europe has to be destroyed entirely financially and, and, and politically, and Russia has to be destroyed as well entirely and, and economically, and there's, there's just no way mm-hmm. that will happen. <laughs> Uh, vraćanju Osmanske imperije, uh, to je čisto da se smiri situacija nekako na teritoriji Turske gde su veliki financijski problemi i gde je jako velika inflacija. So this is an internal political question. What the Turks are, are talking about, about bringing, bringing it back, that's just uh, a way to settle the internal uh, uh, issues, especially the financial issues on the territory of Turkey, uh, which are very substantial. Now, uh, does he see a future war between Russia and Turkey over control of the Black Sea and the Mediterranean? In the future, there will be a future war between Russia and Turkey, maybe around the Red Sea or the Mediterranean. I really doubt it. I see. I, I disagree. I think that eventually there will be a conflict between Russia and Turkey. Uh, ja se ne slažem, meni se čini da, da će de- definitivno biti eventualno grata između Rusije i Turske. Ja, već sam odgovorio, ja mislim da Turci su previše pragmatični da bi ušli u rat koji mogu da izgube. Oni su trgovci, Turci koji su nekad bili ratnici, više nisu. Ako mogu da istrguju nekako, to oni će da urade, ali da uđu u otvoreni sukup, čisto su. Uh, the Turks are just too pragmatic about this, this is why I doubt mm-hmm. it. They're... They're the, mer- they're the merchants, first and foremost. Those who were warmongers among them, the militants, they've, they've died already. If they, if they can get, get those objectives, achieve them by, by a trade of sorts, they will do mm-hmm. it. Uh, well, NATO... Uh, go ahead. It's just my opinion. It doesn't have to be okay. true. That's just the way That's I think. Fine. Uh, but the way I see it is because NATO made Turkey the second most armed country in NATO. The United States made Turkey the second most armed country in NATO. And the reason for this was because NATO wants to use Turkey as a, as a proxy against the Russians in the Mediterranean. And go ahead. Ja to vidim zato što je tako zato što je NATO učinio Tursku drugom najvećom vojnom silom unutar NATO. Amerika je tako učinila i Razlog, uh, 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 razlog je to, to je razlog kog NATO hoće da iskoristi Tursku, Tursku protiv Rusije. Da, ja saglasam sa tim. Oni su je pravili za, za taj princip zašto im treba jaka Turska. Treba im jaka Turska zato što su oni davali Tursima. Znate što sam pričao malo ranije. Znači, treba da kažete ljudima da su veliki, da će moći nešto da dobiju, da su oni najbolji i onda ih uče tu rad. NATO je to radio s Turskom. I, I'm agreeing with this. Uh, that's this is why they've developed this very principle, because they need this this uh, strong Turkey, and which and, and they've uh, made allowances to Turkey in that regard. Like I've already said a while ago, uh, all you have to do is tell people that they're great, that they're better than other people, and and that NATO has been using this, mm-hmm. exploiting this. But problem is that they think that everyone is like they. Turci su trgovci i Turci su videli svoju priliku da dobiju jaku armiju, a da ne ulože previše u to. I oni su to iskoristili. Jedna od najsamostalnijih država uopšte u NATO, to je Turska. Baš zato što su im Amerikanci napravili jaku armiju. The problem of Americans is that they assume that everybody thinks like they do. Mm-hmm. Turks are merchants. And they've... they've uh, They've acquired an army that is very strong without actually making a lot of investments. Uh, but uh, Turkey is one of the most independent countries within NATO. Yes. And this is this is entirely because due to American activities. Uh, but does he ever see Turkey maybe going rogue uh, away from American power and trying to establish hegemony over parts of the Black Sea Mediterranean and then in that type of situation conflicting with Russia 
and eventually uh, the whole situation intensifying into a, or exploding into an actual uh, conflict over the Mediterranean. Because remember, Turkey oh. controls the straits. Turkey controls the straits into the Mediterranean, and perhaps that will be a point of contention between Russia and and uh, and Turkey. Da ali ali Turska sada ima svoje ambicije i i pikira na sredozemlje i na crno more i u toj u toj i i kao stvarivanju izvesti hegemonije i u toj situaciji moguće je da će doći do sukoba između Rusije i Turske koji može da eksplodira vremenom. Turska kontroliše Moreuze i koji pristupaju crno moru i može će to biti upravo tačka spora između Rusije i Turske. Sve je moguće, ja mislim da neće, ali sve je moguće. Well, it's all possible, I don't think that that's going to happen, but it is possible. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I have some uh, mm, more questions for you. Uh, does he ever see a future war between uh, Germany and Russia, or perhaps the European Union and, and Russia? Da li možda vidite u budućnosti da može se desiti neki rat između Nemačke i Rusije ili Evropske unije i Rusije? Jedan od razloga zašto Rusija ne uništava ustove kojima se dovozi oružje iz Evrope na teritoriju Ukrajine je taj da se Evropa obezdoruši. One of the main reasons that Russia is not destroying the bridges that are being used to transport arms from Europe is so that the Europe would be disarmed that way. I da bi došlo do nekog rata, Evropa mora da ima jaku armiju. Međutim, u Evropi je armija sve slabija i slabija i imaju sve manje i manje oružja. Rusi ih vešto dovlače da dođu na teritoriju Ukrajine i uništavaju. For such a war to erupt, Europe has to have a strong army. Yes. And Europe's army is being growing weaker and weaker. They have no guns. Uh, Russia has been very astutely been been uh, driving them so that they would bring all their guns in Ukraine where they would be destroyed. Ja bih vam rekao koliko sam video ubijenih ukrajinskih vojnika i stranaca i koliko ima uništene tehnike, vi bi rekli da lažete, zato da da lažem, zato se ja i trudim da ne pričam o nekim ciframa. Međutim, cifre su prosto ogromne, nezamislive, znači, prosto nezamislive. If I were to tell you how many dead soldiers, killed soldiers, Ukrainian soldiers and foreigners and military equipment that I've seen, you would have said that I was lying. This is why I'm trying not to talk about those numbers, because the numbers are just immense. They're unbelievable. Okay, but tell me more, but tell me about that, because I'm willing to, I'm not like a typical American who's just going to reject everything you say. Molim vas, jeste više o tome, mene baš to mnogo zanima, ja nisam kao tipičan amerikanac, mene baš zanima to što se reći. Znači, ja ću vam reći cifre koje su izneli američki generali. Izneli su cifre da gine, znači, mesečno oko 15.000 vojnika na teritoriju Ukrajine. The official numbers that the American generals have, have published, mm -hmm. they've, they've said that uh, 15,000 soldiers are dying on a monthly basis. Those, those numbers are actually uh, diminished significantly. Okay, those numbers by by diminished. You mean that? Uh, sorry, sorry, under underreported. Under -reported, okay, and and how many? Because he brought up foreign uh, fighters. How many foreign fighters do you think have gone to Ukraine to fight for Ukraine against Russia? Uh, Pre nekih nedelju dana bilo ih je otprilike 65.000, od toga je ubijeno i ranjeno oko 25.000, znači još otprilike 40.000 ih ima koji su borbeno sposobni. Uvijek ago, there was 65.000 ovaj. U meantime, 
there were about 25,000 killed and wounded. So there's a, about 40-ish uh, thousand of, of those who are battle ready that, that remain. That's a huge number. That's a whole army. Percentage, most of them by far come from Poland. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, I agree with you, that it's a huge number. Those are huge numbers. Those are, yes, it's a whole army. That's literally an entire army of people. That's a huge number. See, there's a there's a battle line that's seventeen hundred kilometers wide. Mm-hmm. So sixty-five thousand men is actually nothing for that that kind of a war line. I see. Uh, that kind of a, a front needs needs at least six hundred thousand men just to be able to hold the line. Uh, now you know what gets me about the polls is that Ukrainian nationalists did the most horrendous massacres on the Polish people during the Second World War, and it seems like the polls have forgotten about this and have gone have have become completely drunk, intoxicated with their pro Ukraine sentiment. Zato što meni što meni fascinira tu kod Poljaka. Uh tokom Drugosvjetskog rata uh, uh, Ukrajinci su bili izvršili strašne pokolje nad Poljacima, ali Poljaci bez obzira sada su se potpuno nekako napili tim pro ukrajinskim sentimentom i potpuno to ignorišu u korist tog to podržavanja Ukrajine. Uh, 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 Poljaci ne podržavaju Ukrajinu. Polish aren't actually supporting Ukraine. Poljaci ratuju na teritoriju Ukrajine da bi ostvarili neke svoje ciljeve, to jest da vrate zapadnu Ukrajinu Poljsku. They're actually uh what they're actually doing is they're achieving their own objectives of bringing bring some parts of Ukraine okay. to their own folks. That makes sense. That, that makes sense. sense. Um what do you think um uh, this is kind of a this is a question that probably requires a very long answer. Mm, but what do you think Americans, generally speaking, get wrong when it comes to, to ove, Russia in this war? Sadovo je vrato dugo pitanje, ali šta mislite da obično Amerikanci shvataju pogrešno u ovom celom ratu sa, sa, ili, ili sa Rusijom uopšte? Uh, koji Amerikanci? Narod ili američka armija ili političari? Which Americans are referring to? The people, the American people, or the politicians, well, I mean, or some of the critics? American people who are interested in this topic, right? They tend to be pro-Ukraine, very anti-Russia. Like the like the people, like Chris Cappy, like that that type of person. But not who is interested in this whole thing. To a pro-Ukraine skinnerot. Ili i antiruski narod, recimo kao ovaj Chris Cappy sa kojim ste razgovarali. Znate kako, uh, u Americi sloboda slova odavno ne postoji. Uh, zatvaraju sve alternativne izvore informacija, tako da oni veruju onome što im se prezentuje. A ovaj američki vojnik je mnogo čega dokazao, što sam, znači taj s kojim sam pričao, uh, što sam ja inače mislio o američkoj vojsci. America, the freedom of speech has, hasn't existed for a long while. Uh, all the alternative sources of information are uh, of information have been quelled. Uh, this this uh, this man that I've talked to has confirmed a lot of what I thought about the American military. Which man? Kathy. And and what and what do you and what did you think? Like what what assumptions assumptions did you have that were confirmed by that conversation? A koje ste to imali pretpostavke koje je taj razgovor potvrdio? Ja se imam prilike da pričam sa zarobljenim Amerikancima i kod nas kad je bio rat znači na Kosovu i sad kad je bio ovde na, na teritoriji Ukrajine. I svi su otprilike imali istu priču e, i jako slab nivo inteligencije. Znači ovaj e, 
koji je taj Kepil, kako se već zvao, pokazao se dosta glupim čovekom, neobrazovanim, koji ne može da shvati šta se dešava u svetu. Postavljao je tako glupa pitanja na koje je prosto bilo smešno odgovarati. I ja sam uvjeren da prosečan Amerikanac, znači obični američki građanin, je mnogo pametniji od američkog vojnika. Well, I had a chance to talk to uh, American POWs. Uh, they were around, uh, they were also uh, around in, uh, in, among us uh, when there was a war over Kosovo and, and, on, and on the territory of Ukraine. And they all had the same story. Uh, he, uh, and, and a very low level of intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, like this Cappy guy, or whatever his name yeah. is. So uh, he, he, uh, presented himself as a very stupid man who just cannot understand things. He, he doesn't understand things. He, he posed very stupid mm-hmm. questions. And I'm convinced that an average American, uh, a regular American, is a lot smarter than an, than an American soldier. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, I've, I'm laughing at this. This is uh, probably true, yes. Is <laughs> interesting to smear money to worry about the Dutchman. Because uh, in the American military, they brainwash people. Because yeah. uh, I had a conversation with a guy that I've known for about 10 years. He, or he, he was in the U.S. Army for about 10 years. And uh, he told me basically that Ukraine, the, Ukrainians, the Ukrainian military has every right to join forces with Nazis because... Without the help of Nazis, uh, the Russians will will wipe the will wipe out the Ukrainians. Yes, I've known him for about ten years. He was in the army, and he was just saying that Ukraine has a lot of right to join the Nazis, to join the Nazis, because because so what was the reason uh, that that the Ukrainians have every right to ally with Nazis? Because if they don't, then then the Russians will wipe them out. Ako se ne udruže, onda će da ih Rusi sve zbrišu. Is he is he tired? Does he want to does he want to go to sleep? I mean, I I, I don't want to to take his time. Jeste vi umorni, ovo ćete možda da se da prispravate malo, pošto ja ušte neću da vam uzijem previše vremena. Sve ok, pošto kad su ljudi normalni, meni je interesantno razgovarati. Leđa me malo bole, ali to nije strašno. Znači, ja priviko sam na to leđa, zub, kad ništa ne boli, ja se probudim, ništa me ne boli, ja se bojim, rekom, nešto nije u redu. Uh, it's completely fine, I'm completely okay. fine. Uh, when, when people are normal, I, I, have no, my, I, I don't have a problem talking at all. See, I have, a, I only have, I have no problem at all. I have these back pains. Oh. Pain, uh, but but besides, sometimes I have uh, uh, tooth pains as well. But I, I'm used to having pains all the time. When I actually don't have any pains, I'm actually, I actually start to get worried and I just wake up because <laughs> then I then start wondering if, if there's something even worse happening. And now, how did you get those pains? I mean, is this from the war? Injuries from the war? Odakle vam ti bolovi, je li to iz rata, je li to povrede? Je li to rati povrede? Ja sam imao pet ranjavanja, kako se to na srcu kaže, iz automatskog oružja. Pet puta me metak pogodio, prostrelne rane, zatim e, mnogo slomljenih kosti, u izbijenih e, pleća su bila izbijena kontuzija, to je na srpskom potres mozga. Tri potresa mozga sam imao, jedan put su doktori rekli da su me jedva vratili iz mrtvih, mada se ja ničeg ne sećam, sećam se kad je e, projektil pao i sećam se kad se probudio u bolnici, znači nema onih svetlih tunela o kojima pričaju. I had five woundings from automatic weapons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was hit by, by, uh, by bullets five times. I had puncturing wounds. Uh, I had a lot of bones broken. I had, uh, I had my, my uh, back broken as well. I had con- concussions. I had three concussions. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one instance in which the doctors have barely pulled me back. Uh, I don't remember a thing. I 
I just remember getting wounded and then uh, waking up on the operating table, but I've, I, I, but there was no uh, tunnels with lights or anything. Natural oh. ice, no nature. So I'm definitely not going ending up in heaven. Ending up in heaven? Oh, <laughs> you're like a cat. You have nine lives. That's used to call mass came to death. There, uh, Zvolta. I think I've, I've spent all nine of them and probably a few spares as well. <laughs> I have a lot of cats myself. Yeah, yeah, I'm just a much okay, so. I've got four cats I have, myself. I have in my ten. Home. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> They're a pain in the in the in the neck sometimes. That's because you can't cook them properly. If you could cook them, that would be. Oh my god. Oni vama bi rekao da su da su mačke teški gnjavatori. Ne, mačke su dobre. Ja ja ih volim. Oni su mnogo dobri. Cats are good. I love them. They're very good animals. Yes. Do you know what's interesting is. I met a Croatian Catholic priest uh, years ago, and uh, he told me that he wanted to kill all cats and gas them to death. It was one of the weirdest conversations I've ever had. He should be killed. <laughs> I, I, I like, I'm enjoying this conversation a lot. Enjoying this. Uh, you know, I noticed watching you, because I've, I've been following you on social media for a long time, and I have noticed that you have a lot of animals. You have pigs, you have, uh, I think, horses. What are you doing yes, with, with, with the farm, exactly? Yes, I was going to talk about the industry, and I was going to talk about the industry, and the industry, and the industry, and Šta inače radite po, po gazdinstvu, selskom imanju sa tim životinjama? Uh, svinje nemam, konje nemam, konje nisu moji, to su konje od ugara, pošto ja jako volim životinje, pa sam mu pomagao oko konja. Mi I have any pigs, I have some horses, uh, but those aren't ho- my, my horses, they're horses of a friend of mine, so I'm just, just helping ah, okay. him with them. And what do you do with the pigs? Da, oh, mi, sorry, go ahead. Mi su i mali koze. Uh, jako dobre koze su naše bile kao mačke razmažene, međutim zbog obaveza smo ih morali prodati. We had some goats and the goats were very spoiled like cats, but we had to sell them. Ah. And with the... Yeah. I sada je mnogo dušije koji ima koze da se igramo sa njima. I žena voli životinje kao i ja. And we keep playing with those goats and my, my love just love, loves the goats and, and animals. Oh, that's nice. A sled... Nećemo imati, kupit ćemo malo magarence, jedno koje će da bude tu sa našim kućićima, pošto imamo jednog velikog psa i jednog malog. So, uh, we'll, be, we'll be acquiring some more animals, uh, we're going to buy some, some dogs, we'll be having a, a large and a small dog. I notice you have a huge uh, dog. Yeah, sorry, 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 and, and we, we, we're going we're gonna, to, uh, next spring we're going to buy a donkey. Oh, I notice you have a huge dog. He's got 85 kilo, kilos approximately. He has a huge animal. And I notice you have a big fat black cat as well. No, two cats. Oh, okay. And do you have chickens? Uh, Ovdje imam proizvodnju mesa gdje proizvodimo uh, suvo meso po srpskim receptima i zbog zakona tu gdje je fabrika, za pre... no, mala, to je mala fabrikica, za preradu mesa ne sme da se drže domaće životinje, koze, svinje, kokoške, ništa od toga. Uh, the thing is we have uh, a meat plant over here, we're producing meat. Uh, we are making dry meat according to Serbian recipes, but there's a law here. So there's a small plant, meat plant, but the law is that states that we can't have uh, domestic animals as mm-hmm. well. I see. I see. Yeah, I noticed that you make uh, sausages. You have a sausage making. Yep. 
Идеята е да, да, да изправите ковасица, да имате погон за правене ковасица. Ай, боля сурус и никой не прави боля ковасица и сула месо от нас. The best sausages in Russia, nobody makes better sausages than us. The, the Hungarians have their own sausage, the Polish have their own sausage. I've tried Hungarian, I've tried Polish, I haven't tried Serbian yet. Uh, the Hungarian sausages are good, but the problem with Hungarian food in general is that it's just too spicy. Too hot. Люди кога праве месо, осуво месо као што ми радиме, оние оче брзо да зараде новац, а ми го радиме полако. Значи од почетка, значи од прве прераде меса до танира, пројде четири до пет месеци. The, uh, the thing is, uh, when people make the, the dry meat, uh, they want to make a quick buck. Mm-hmm. We instead make it slowly. Uh, from beginning to end, there's about there's about a four or nine, five months period of, of the actual meat processing mm-hmm. process. Wow. It's all completely natural, completely ecological. No chemicals. Here we go. Yeah. Nope. Now, uh, do you garden? Do you grow food? Се бавите баш това, и узгадете своя храна. Да, имамо и мамо своя там парадайзе, краставчиче, паприку, следеща година ще бити още више. Жена исто се воли около куче да ради, така да просто иде. Нашли сме друг друг. Yeah, we, we are uh, growing tomatoes and pickles and paprikas, more, 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 more paprikas oh, nice. over time. Uh, my wife just loves, loves uh, taking care of all this and, and we, we're an, an ideal match in that regard. My uh, wife loves fishing and forest mm-hmm. and she doesn't like shopping at all. Very nice. Very nice. I, I noticed a post that you did where you uh, harvested mushrooms. I know they weren't growing uh, mushrooms, but they were just for Yeah, foraging, yes. That you harvested. Овде око нас су касарне, то е отприлике затворена територија. Мало луѓи може да уѓе да скупља печурки, нив има многу и ми их многу волим. So we're in the barrack, we're in the barracks and that's an, an enclosed off uh, territory. A lot, uh, not many people can enter it and there are a lot of mushrooms around here. We we just love them so we afford Awesome, them. awesome. I, I remember uh, in your interview with uh, Chris Cappy, you said that your longest shot was 1600 meters, and Chris Cappy basically called you a liar. Sećemo vašem intervju sa Chrisom Cappyem, da ste vi rekli da je vaš najduži pogledak, najdalji pogledak bio sa 1500 metara, i Chris se nazvao lažo. But I looked into this, and I found out that... Um, Chris Kyle, who's America's most famous uh, sniper, his longest shot was over 1,900 meters. So I don't see how they autom- they could automatically just call you a liar for for saying that. Chris Kyle, who is the most American stealer, who was able to go to 1,900 meters. Така да ја не видим како ја могу сега да вас автоматски не зове лажан за тоа. Као што ве си рекол, луѓи верују оно што желе да верују. Кога сам почел смејати на тоа, јас сам видел разлог зашто е Америчка војска изгубила сваки рат у кој е ушла. Значи ни еден рат не се добил. У Афганистану, у Ирак губе рат, у ме како се зове, у Виетнам губили рат. Zato što 1600 metara to je neka najobičnija distanca sa puštama koje se danas pravi. Well, already people just uh, believe what they wish to be true. Mm-hmm. 
when he started laughing, I saw the very reason why the American uh, army lost every war. Mm -hmm. uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Vietnam as well. Because uh, 1,600 meters is a very normal mm -hmm. distance uh, to hit with the rifles that are being presently made and manufactured. Mm -hmm. well, you know s kojom sam ja, kojom se koristim, s njom je postavljen svetski rekord na 3500 i nešto metara. The rifle I'm using, uh, presently using, is, uh, has, the, has the world record of uh, uh, 3500 meters ahead of, for, for, for the longest recorded hit. I'm gonna wait. Uh, what's the name of the the rifle? What's the name of that particular rifle? The the gun's rifle's name is Twilight. Mm -hmm. It's made by a manufacturer called uh, manufacturing company called Labayev. What they do is they handcraft rifles. Uh, it's also uh, a forty-eight caliber mm -hmm. rifle. Well, za snajperske puške i jedan metak, jedan metak, košta 105 dolara. So, uh, they, they make these rifles with varying calibers. Mm -hmm. We have these, uh, for instance, uh, the, the bullets themselves are custom made. Mm -hmm. uh, a single bullet is worth $150. Wow! That's amazing. Well, I, I, I'm not seeing what, what's worth 105 bucks. That's my mistake. 105, not 150. But but every every bullet is handcrafted and, and it's it's gloriously made. Now uh, now um, when you made the shot at 1600 uh, meters, was this the rifle that you were using, the Lobayev? It was sixteen hundred meters, and yes, that's, ah. that's the very right. Yes, because uh, I looked up the Lobayev on Wikipedia. It says that it has a typical accuracy potential at ranges exceeding two thousand meters. So, yeah. Da, ja, ja sam to pogledao bio na, bio na Wikipediji i tu piše otvoreno da, da uh, je njima, da je tu uh, zona, domet, domet uh, preci, na kojoj može preći da se gađa oko 2000 metara, tako da ne imamo čovjek problem tu. Ja sam već rekao, on se smeje zato što je, za njih je to nešto nezamislivo, znači pocenjivati protivnika to je nešto najstrašnije što može da bude, zato se i gube ratovi. Well, he was laughing because he was doing the, the very thing that's that's uh, crippling, underestimating one opponent. That's the worst thing you can do. Yes, yes, that's what he was doing. Yeah. 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 Naučili smo i da gađaju na 900 metara u grudnu mišenju, znači grudnu to je tako. I gađali su 10 metaka i 10 pogoraka. 1949. 1944. godine. Ah, pardon, pardon. Uh, so, I was training uh, reservists a while ago, and we were using rifles ma manufactured in 1944. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would they would spend a month with those rifles, and they would learn to um, hit the target uh, uh, at the range of 900 meters, and to hit them in the chest. Basically, they they had this this within the chest mm -hmm. range, and uh, they would hit 10 out of 10 bullets. 
To je sve stvar treninga, sve se može postići i samo se treba trenirati. It's not a matter of training, you can achieve pretty much anything, it's just a mm-hmm. matter of training. Who has long as you train for it. Mm-hmm. When you were fighting in uh, in the movie, uh, they show how they show how you had this duel between between yourself and this Ukrainian sniper. What can you tell us more about that guy that you were that you were in a duel with? Mi smo se podopisivali preko socijalnih mreža bili. U jednom boju ja sam ubio njegovih četvoricu učenika i posle toga on je krenuo u lov na mene. Mi smo imali korespondenci na socijalnih netvorkih i bilo je jedan battle u kojem sam ubio četvore učenika. To je kada je učenika 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 učenika. I see, and and he said some pretty horrible things uh, to you. I remember in the film something about uh, uh, killing your family or something like that. Meni porodica nije isključio u Srbiji, znači ja imam mnogo dece koje sam krstio na Donbasu i oni su takođe moja porodica, a on je specializovao se na ubistvu civila. Well, a lot of people deliver threats to me, threats to me, but when he said this thing, he signed his own death warrant. Uh, my family is not exclusively in Serbia. I have I have a Christian, I'm a godfather to plenty of kids in Donbass, mm-hmm. and he is specialized in killing civilians. I simply knew that uh, that that I just had to find him. Uh, he would always send somebody else, but uh, we lured him into an ambush, and that's where he finished his career. I šta vam reći, mnogo, mnogo ukrajinskih vojnika, tamo ima realno pravi vojnik, tamo nisu svi nacisti, tamo ima vojnika koji veruju da rastu svi koje opuće sve da imu. I ti obični vojnici, oni mrze uglavnom te nacisti i takve kao što je bio taj koji je sebe predstavljao kao Mariupolski blok. I mi smo često dobijali informaciju od samih ukrajinskih vojnika koje su nekako povijesti. Well, there are, see, there are plenty of Ukrainian soldiers. There are real soldiers over there. There are not Nazis that just believe that they're defending their country. Those ordinary soldiers just hate those Nazis. There are some of them that are like that, and uh, and they hate uh, uh, Nazis like like this uh, the God of Mariupol mm-hmm. guy. We had a lot of uh, uh, tips from those very same uh, uh, Ukrainian soldiers about him. I see. Um. Now, let me ask you. There's a question, slightly different, for, not off topic, but slightly different. In the United States, the view on the war is that Ukraine is the victim, Russia is the bad guy. Because Ukraine got invaded. So, what do you tell Americans when you're trying to explain to them why Russia was justified in in what it did? The thing with America is that they're seeing things like like uh, like a horse with a, with, a, with those nozzles mm-hmm. on its on its face. 
ako hoćemo da pričamo pravilno, znači ako je ta teorija da je neko ko je napao drugu državu loš, setite se samo da je ceo NATO pakt bombardovao Jugoslaviju. Da li je NATO bio loš i Amerika? If we're going to talk, talk proper like that, uh, if this theory that, that uh, whoever attacks a country is the bad guy, just remember what NATO did uh, uh, in, in Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't mean that NATO is bad and the America is bad then. Imali smo priliku da gledamo kako američki general laže, znači da uh, Irak ima uh, atomsko oružje i posle se dokazalo da nema, Amerika je prosto uništila Irak kao državu i Libiju i Siriju, da li je to Amerika bila loša zato što je ona napala? So we we had an opportunity to just watch American general lie that Iraq has atomic weapons and then it turned out that it hasn't. Mm -hmm. America just annihilated Iraq and demolished it as a country as well as Libya and Syria. So is America bad because of those mm -hmm. actions? Znači, stvari ne treba gledati tako, stvari treba gledati široko i tada sve bude jasno. Things shouldn't be observed like that. Things should be observed widely so that they, uh, so that uh, things become clear. Za mnoge Amerikance Rusija je u ratu tek po 24. februara, međutim ne zaboravite da je da su Ukrajinci bombardovali teritorije Donbasa osam godina pre toga. I ako je u demokratskom svetu referendum nešto što je pravilno, što izražava volju građana, Narodno Donbasu je preko referenduma izabrao da se ocepi od Ukrajine. Americans, uh, Russia has been at war since February the 24th. But don't forget that that uh, there were that uh, there were there was bombings eight years for the whole for whole eight years beforehand. And uh, if this democratic world holds referendums as, as so important and sacred, and and the people has as elected uh, have, have elected to uh, join Russia. And for independence, then, then, uh, then how how do we observe this? I ako gledamo na primer na referendum, postala je država Srbija i Crna Gora posle razvala kad se rastorila Jugoslavija. Crna Gora je provela referendum i odvojila su Srbije. Srbija nije pošla u rat protiv Crne Gore. Zato što su oni na referendumu rešili da žive odeljeno. So, at, 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 at referendums alone, there was, uh, after, uh, after Yugoslavia, there was a, a union of countries called Serbia and Montenegro for a while. Uh, and, uh, and Montenegro had a referendum and voted to secede mm -hmm. from it. But Serbia didn't go to war over, over Montenegro splitting from it, over a refer referendum. I see. Za zapad. Crne Gore je bio legalni referendum, a za referendum na Donbasu je bio nelegal. Znači, ili je zakon jednak za sve, ili zakona ne postoji. So for the West, the issue of Montenegro was a legal one, while, while Donbas just wasn't considered a legal referendum and a legal secession. There has to be a law that, that, uh, is, uh, that treats everybody equally, otherwise there's no law. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I I remember uh, in the film, uh, in the end of the movie, you spoke with an old man who was an electrician, who said that he continues to be shot at by uh, Ukrainian fighters, and you promised that you would help him, and and. I'm sorry. I'm sorry uh, the old man was a what? An electrician. Yes, electrician, and he was telling uh, Mr. Beric that he uh, keeps getting shot at by Ukrainian fighters, and uh, and uh, you told this old man that you would help him, that you, would, that you would do everything that you can to help him, and you began to weep, and I'm wondering why, wh what made you cry, what made you weep? One of the 
pominjali, tu je bio jedan, jedan stariji čovjek koji je bio električar i uh, on je bio rekao da su njega pucali i, on, i rekao je da, da Ukrajinci stalno pucaju na njega. I tu pred kraj, pred kraj samog dokumentarca vam su vam bile pošle suze na oči. Šta je to što je izazvalo te suze? Uh, Olja nije pokazala ceo snimak iz kuće tog čovjeka. Did not show the entire recording of that mm-hmm. man's house. Mik, uh, njemu, on je živeo uh, u kući, a preko puta je bila kuća u kome su mu živeli sin, snaja i unuka. So, uh, he lived in a house, but across, that, uh, across the road from that house, uh, there was a house in which his son, his daughter-in-law and his grand, grandkid, uh, granddaughter lived. I oni mene odve u sobu da mi pokaže sliku, na toj slici su bili oni dok su bili živi. U njihovu kuću je priletela ukrajinska raketa i oni su svi tamo poginuli. I ta njegova bol bukvalno iz njega izlazila u, u, u mene i ja nisam mogao, jednostavno nisam mogao zadržati suze kad je on pričao o tom. So, uh, he took me to that house and showed me, showed me a picture of them. Uh, there, there was a picture of all of them while they were being mm-hmm. alive. They were alive and uh, there was a Ukrainian missile that just flew into their house and they all, they all died. Mm-hmm. Uh, his pain was just seeping from them and, and it just, I've absorbed it. And I just couldn't, couldn't withstand it and, and this is what forced us. I see, I see. Yeah, <laughs> da sam došao kod njega. Moj zadatak je bio uništavati uh, snajperiste sa druge strane koji su pucali po civilima. Da bi mogao pravilno sve uraditi, morao sam da imam potpunu informaciju, znači odakle pucaju, kako se ponašaju i često sam razgovarao sa ljudima koji su potpadali po taj uh, snajperski, snajperski ogon sa druge strane. I, I was just there by well I wasn't there by accident. My assignment was to destroy all the snipers they were shooting at the civilians. Uh, in order to do this properly, uh, I had to have all the information. I would often talk to the people who were uh, who fell under the, the sniper fire from the other side. I takih razgovora je bilo mnogo, međutim Olja nije sve snimila zato što na mnoga mesta gdje Cala artiljerija, mi smo se trudili da je ne bude. Ona je imala oko 700 sati snimljenog materijala. So, uh, there was a lot of these conversations. Olja did not record all of them, because there was a lot of places which were under artillery fire. So, we, we took uh, efforts not to bring her to such, such areas. She overall, uh, I think it all together, she made about 700 uh, She, uh, hours that, that she recorded that the, her, her footage was 700 hours and can you tell us about the uh, tell us about if you can about some of the the disturbing interviews that she took that weren't uh, put in the movie možete nam kažete ako možete ovaj, da nam kažete o, o nekim od tih uznemirujućih razgovora koje, koje je ona snimila ali koji na kraju nisu završili u montaži Pa ne, u stvari ja ne mogu da setim šta je ona sve snimala, zato što ja je prvo nisam verovao, mislio sam da je ona američki špil. Well, I can't remember all of them. Uh, the thing is, I just wasn't keeping track of all, all the things that, that, that she was uh, mm-hmm. taking uh, recording. And I, because, because uh, I also, at that time, I, I really believed that she was an American spy. Oh. A zatim, kašče, predsjednik Republike je rekao da treba da joj pomognemo u svemu, jer to je jedina šansa da se vidi naša strana nekako na zapadu. I uklano, kroz neko vreme, jednostavno kao da nje, nje nema. Znači, mnogo stvari ima o kojima smo mi pričali i koje su bile snimljene, ali ja prosto ne mogu da setim detalje. Ja ne znam više kad je ona bila, kad nije bila tamo. Ja se ujutro probudim, stavim bubicu, da li ona tu ili nije, ne važno, jednostavno već postalo stvar na vikimiru. So, Harchenko uh, 
uh, told us that we have to give her every support possible. Uh, and he insisted because he said that uh, that was the only chance they had, we had to show our side of the story to the West. And it was lit. Uh, and and for a while she, uh, for a while she was literally gone. Uh, there are a lot of people, uh, things that, that we discussed about that I just can't remember at this point. Uh, I don't remember, I, I don't know when she was uh, 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 at my side or not. I had this habit of just waking up and, and taking uh, uh, those, those earbuds and, and j just to check up on her. Uh, provjeru od kuda je gađano. Jednostavno i nisam vodio zato što to na psihiku deluje jako loše, a devojkama ne treba da vide tako nešto. Uvijek je uvijek 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 uvij make ballistical calculations on how it was done. Uh, I didn't bring her to, to those cases because that, that, uh, seeing kids get murdered is just extremely bad for the psyche and uh, girls just shouldn't see something like that. And, and how were these ki kids killed, if you don't mind me asking? I'm going to ask them how did they kill them? I snajpera, znači koliko sam ja vidio ubijenih i snajpera, to je bilo četvoro dece, većina druge je ubijena bila artiljerijom. Tamo gde sam ja išao da vršim analize sa ljudima koji se bave tim sa sledstvenim komitetom, to je tih četvoro koji su bili ubijeni i snajpera, znači morao sam da razgovaram s njihovim roditeljima kojima je bilo jako teško, ali oni su bili spremni da razgovaraju sa mnom zato što su znali ko sam ja i znali su da će njihovo dete biti osvećeno s tom poslu. They were killed by sniper. Four kids, there were four kids. Most of the other kids were killed by artillery. But this is, these sniper shootings were when, were the cases in which I went to go and went in to make these analyses. Uh, there were also people with me that were they were there as forensic experts who were assigned by the investigating committee of those uh, those four were killed by snipers and uh, the parents took it really hard and uh, they were prepared to talk to me because they knew that uh, that means that there's a hundred percent chance that, that those kids will be avenged and were these kids murdered by the guy who calls who called himself the god of Mariupol Jel tu decu bio ubio taj čovjek koji se sam sebe zove Mariupolski bog? Jedan. One of them was. And why would these Ukrainian snipers murder children? What's, what's their motive? I zašto, bi, I zašto bi ti ukrajinski snajperi ubijali decu? Koja je tu njihova motivacija? Uh, jeste gledali sad video, na primjer, toga što je izbo čovjeka sa nožem, ili video ovih što su pucali ruskim vojnicima u kolena. Koja je mi motivacija za to? Za njih to su ruski i ruski ne treba da žive. Have you seen the video footage, for example, of that, of the stabbing of that one man with a knife? What's the motivation for this? Well, for them, these are Russians and Russians shouldn't live. Na teritoriji Ukrajine prodaju se torte, na njima je dete, i to ima na YouTube-u, može da se nađe, na njima je rusko dete i oni se smeju kako toj deci seku glave, kako im seku ruke i šta više sada na majicama nose natpise što više mi ubijemo ruski, to će manje morati da ih ubijaju naša deca. Uh, 
uh, on the territory of Ukraine, there are cakes being sold uh, depicting kids, and you have you can see this on YouTube. Uh, there's a there's a there there are cakes depicting Russian kids, that, and everybody's laughing about the notion of of the cutting those those uh, and laughing about the notion of cut, cutting those kids kids uh, heads. And, and cutting their arms, and furthermore, uh, they, there's a fashion of wearing T-shirts that, that say, "The more Russians we kill, the fewer Russians our kids will have to kill." So. Taj procenat koji je pucao na decu, to je jako mali procenat, tako da. Budaka ima svuda, tako da ja, ja ne mogu da objasnim nikad razlog zašto bi neka odigao pušku na tete. Međutim, streljaju. Uh, if you observe how many snipers there are in their army, the percentage of those shooting at kids is actually very small. Mm -hmm. You have lunatics just about anywhere. I cannot explain for the life of me the reason why somebody would just pick up a rifle to shoot to shoot down a kid, but they do shoot him. Um, it's almost like the, 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 the spirit of Bandera never left. Tako da stvari izgleda kao da druh Bandere nigde nije otišao. Nikad nije otišao. Pa i nije otišao. Zašto je on živa na zapadnoj Ukrajini? Njega su prosto podigli Glavni trg u Kijevu se zove Krv Stepa, trg Stepana Bandere, stadion Stepana Bandere, Šuhijevića, tako da tamo to živi. Well, they never left. Uh, it didn't leave. Uh, because it, it is lived on in western Ukraine, they've, they've erected uh, a, a, a monuments to him, to Bandera. The, the main city square is, is called the Bandera mm -hmm. Square, and there there are uh, uh, there, there, there are museums as well. Uh, sorry, a, a stadium mm -hmm. as well uh, called the Kointe Mandera, and also Shuhievich as well. Yes. Ja se opet vraćam procentima. Znači, tih zločinaca u ukrajinskoj armiji nema tako mnogo. Ako računamo svu veličinu ukrajinske armije, oni sad imaju oko 600.000 ljudi pod oružjem. Kao što sam sto puta rekao u toku ovog razgovora, Ludaka ima svuda, ali da, ima tamo tih nacista, međutim, procentualno to je mali broj, ali mali broj iznosi nekih 30 do 40 hiljada. To je ogromna cifra ako gledate da su ljudi sa oružima. Ovo je kako se vrlo. Uh, these war, war criminals are not as many we take the whole size mm -hmm. of the Ukrainian army into account. There's an overall 600,000 men uh, armed men. And like I've said already a hundred times in this conversation alone, there are lunatics just about mm -hmm. anywhere. Uh, there are these Nazis over there who are, in terms of percentage, a very small number. Mm -hmm. But this small number is, it comes down to about 30, 000, 30 or 40,000 men. And this is a huge number when, when we're talking about armed men. Well, that's pretty much what the size of the OUN was during the Second World War. I don't think he heard. Uh, yeah, he, 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 not the police, but Polizei, okay. C could he give us an example of an intense battle that he went through? Can you give us an example of an intense battle that he went through? Where are you? Where are you? 
oslobađanje ruske granice. Mogu biti takve imena. Znaš, rad je kao rad, tu ne treba ulaziti u detalje, on je jedno zlo i... Znači, ako treba se završiti, moraš da ratuješ da bi ga završio. Znači, tu posebno s takvim, takvim ljudima, jer tu bez uništavanja tog nacizma neće se završiti. A sad ja da pričam o nekim posebnim bitkama, mislim da nema smisla, to o tome treba da pričaju istoričari u budućnosti. Well, there were several, for instance, the Lohajsk, uh, the liberation of the, the Russian, uh, Russian border, but war is war. It doesn't need going into details. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a it's an evil, and it if it has to be uh, uh, waged, then you have to wage it in order to finish it. Especially with with people like these. Uh, without destroying Nazism, this isn't going to end. And there's no uh, sense in me talking about this. It's the historians that that should be eventually talking about this. Fair enough. <laughs> And I'm, also, and I'm also keeping material for a, for a, for my next book that should be. Published. Oh, okay. Now, will, now, will, will there be any books translated into English? Maybe to some books that will be translated into English. This book that is translated into Russian. Ona je nas bukvalno financirala, može se reći cijel rat, ona je prodana, za, znači kad smo preveli to u novac koji smo dobijali, prodana je za 97.000 dolara za svo to vreme odkredena na ruski i sad taj novac je otišao na pomoć našim ranjenima, na kupovinu materijala, na pomoć dečim domovima u Donjecku. Tako da bukvalno kad sam bio izašao iz rata, iako sam tamo zaratio, bio mnogo para na, na toj knjizi, ostao sam bio bez jedne rubije. So, uh, it was, there was this book that we, we translated to Russian that financed the whole war for us. It was sold for about $97,000 and for, uh, for, for the whole war. Uh, all this money has been used to help the wounded to buy uh to buy equipment mm -hmm. and for the help to uh uh for uh financing foster mm -hmm. homes for the children in donetsk uh, when i came back from the war uh, after after using all this money for these goals after i came back from the war the, i didn't have a single ruble to me uh, so I've bought my own personal rifle that I'm using, the sniper rifle, for $8,000. The book is very good, and I do hope that it's going to be eventually translated to English language, but I just don't know. I, I don't know the lang English language, if so it's, I can't do it If myself. it's translated to English, man, I would, I would totally buy it. Ako bude prevedeno na engleski, ja bi apsolutno kupio. Budite distributer tehnike za Ameriku. Then you be the distributor, uh, the American distributor for it. Uh, I'll definitely advertise it. I'll tell people to buy it. Ja bi je definitivno kupio. Definitely, definitely ja buy it. Da bi ja bi definitivno kupio. M maybe make uh, some translations and I'll try to push uh, for people to buy it and then we'll see uh, how well it does. Možda bi mogu da je prevedem, pa ću da ganjam ljudi da je kupi, pa ćemo vidimo kako će da prođe. Pa, ima ja brzo kuca na ta staturi, ja mislim da bi on preveo veoma brzo. Ja sam to i radio profesiju nekoliko puta, mogu ja da vam pomogu, ne možda pričam o tome, nije nekaj problem. I just said that, Beric said that I'm typing very quickly on the keyboard, that I might be able to type it for him, and I said, Find, uh, it, it, we could talk about it. I can't that actually, do that, that, you actually could do that. You definitely have the capability. His English, tell him your English is better than mine, really. Ted, don't embarrass me, please. No, really. I mean, I'm serious. I think, we, I think we've talked, I think the interview has... has is pretty good. I think we we've got enough for the interview. But uh, 
please t tell him not to hang up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to end the stream, but tell him please not, not to hang up. Kaže, kaže te, znači, evo već mi pričamo, ima, ima tu negdje tri sata ili koliko već i, i sve je sjajno. Uh, uh, te predlaže da, da, ove, da, da okončamo stream, ali molim vas, najljubaznije, apelo na vas samo da, da okončamo stream, ali da ostanemo na vezi. Ja, 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 I'm Stay very zavar, happy zavar. that uh, so many people from Serbia uh, are on my chat. Though. I hope you guys uh, continue to to look at my videos. Uh, let me see. Yeah. So I'm going to stop. Okay. I'm going to stop uh, streaming. Yeah, stop.